Well, hello, friends. Welcome one and welcome all. I can't offer much in this outdoor hall, but sit here and rest. You must be weary, and I'll share with you Tales of Tyria. <laughs> Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this week on Tales of Tyria, we have a lot of great stuff in, in the Lost Shore. Hey, Citizens hey, I'm talking. Soon, the newest no, most you can't just interrupt. In We're talking about the Lost Shore. I don't, you by the I don't care about the consortium. Soon, have citizens. Coming soon, <laughs> just, the you won't stop. No, stop. <laughs> Yes, welcome ladies and gentlemen, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria this week on uh, the Sound Strategy Network. I am Bridger, I'll be your host for this evening, and we are going to be talking all about the Lost Shores. But before we go there, let me first thank you guys for tuning in. Glad you got a hold of the program, however you may have found it. Tell a friend or two, won't you? Today we have a bunch of special guests joining us, so let's jump right in and introduce them, shall we? Dantaine, welcome back again, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. It was, it was fun last time, and it, it more than likely will be fun uh, the second time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for if applying the, probability the, theory. If the RNG is on our side, it'll be really fun. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, sir. Dante, of course, has a very popular YouTube channel at uh, youtube.com slash, is it slash user slash Dante? Or is it it's, just slash Dante? It works either way. Either no way. Matter, right? All right. Also from the YouTube, it's the invasion of the interwebs today. Kai, welcome, of course. Hey, I'm excited to be here with fellow YouTubers and new people, Chinese. <laughs> Indeed. And also from the YouTube, this is the YouTube show, uh, his first time on the show here, Matt Visual. Welcome, sir. Well, thank you, good sir. Glad to be here. Well, it's definitely good to see you. We haven't uh, had you on before, but you've been a big part of the community. We had uh, a little, a little. Uh, I guess you're, you're more famously known for your little Mac parody commercials for Guild Wars 2, amongst others. And yeah. uh, both Dante and you and Kai do plenty of other Guild Wars 2 content out there, so highly recommend you guys check it out. There are links in the show notes, or at least there will be as soon as I'm finished putting them in there, uh, to all those channels for you guys. Highly recommend it. Uh, now, let's drop right down to the brass tacks, guys. Was this not the most epic, awesome content patch ever? Or was it not as good as the Halloween one? What do you think? Go, Kai, tell me. Okay, the content that we got was good. The events, not so much. Halloween had way better events, but the actual content we got, like the fractals and the ascension gear and stuff like that was really good. But the whole Karka thing, I thought we could have just ignored that and <laughs> put it to one side. But that's me. <laughs> Dante, Halloween versus Lost Shores. Go. Um, well, one's a holiday, so... Uh, <laughs> look, I'm not trying... I'm going to try my best not to insult people today, but <laughs> Halloween was better than this. Like, really? Yes. Ah. Hey, well, except for the last thing that we all just finished doing, which I think the reward was very, <laughs> very good. I half expected to open that chest at the end and get... Uh, crap like i normally do so. i expected that also matt what do you think oh my gosh i'm gonna have to agree with everybody uh halloween it was good skins everyone could get them this lost shores event was boring i gotta say i'm sorry i'm sorry it was really boring <laughs> i'm gonna try to be as toned down as possible but it, it except for the last event of course everyone <laughs> loves gear of course everyone's gonna be happy with that but everything else was just kind of like okay lag lag <laughs> frame lag. drops lag and you're gonna do it you're gonna do it in lion's arch which has the worst fps in the game that's true in arch. Yeah. so I think that might it be was true. just wow but and in the last event it was could have been like the last 10 minutes were exciting but making me just Auto attack a Karka for two hours. Come on, that, I, like Zaitan was more interesting. That's saying something. <laughs> That's true. I, okay. 
<laughs> all right, so let's start with the first thing that came out this week that we all learned a lot about, and that's the Ascended gear. Now, we haven't really necessarily had a whole lot of time to work and, and experiment with these. I know some people already got them, but uh, let's, let's quickly describe. Is anybody able to describe in a few words what the Ascended gear thing is, what we're talking about here? Anybody up for the challenge? I guess so. Basically, what they want the Ascended gear to be is kind of a, a little step between exotic gear and legendary gear. And basically, it's got a little bit of a stat upgrade than what we can see in exotics. But at the moment, you can only get two bits of Ascended gear, and that is a ring and a back piece. So it's not like a whole other tier of gear where you have to to completely get everything new it's just two pieces that you can currently get and you basically get them from collecting items in fractals and you can then forge them in the mystic forge or you can get them from drops from certain daily bosses so it's not a massive kind of better than what we already have so in short. <laughs> when when this was announced there was a pretty big backlash in a number of places on the forums on the reddit on um the i don't know Guild Wars, like Lions Arch public chat, everybody started going crazy when this was announced because we had very little information, just what we got from this article here. Uh, Dantain, what, what did you think when you first saw this? Were you offended, upset? I mean, what happened? What was going through your head? With a lot of things, when it comes to like, if you play the game a lot and you know that when you look at the map, you go, okay, well, there's parts of the map that we can't go to, therefore there's a plan here. When they said, here's a tier between legendary and exotic and they said you're only going to get rings and back pieces i i immediately thought they're just going to allow us access to other gear slots as the game goes on you know as new zones are unlocked as the next you know the next karka event happens for another place <laughs> to you know uh, but that's what i'm thinking is happening and if that's what they're going to do and they're going to allow us to have that like helms and shoulders next or gloves and foot you know feet next or whatever I think that's a, a very good thing for this game because the gear cap is so easily attainable and some people that should be playing Guild Wars who are probably still playing other games are used to a gear grind and this isn't a gear grind but it's it's close enough to um, something to that, that tells the player, hey, you know what, uh, we have a plan, you're going to want to come back because this is an incentivization and there's not a whole lot of that in this game. Spes you know, because chests drop crap. <laughs> so, you know, I yeah. like it. I really do like the idea. If that's what they're going to do, they're not going to make ascended gear and then make something that's in between ascended and legendary. Like that's, when they start doing that. That's one of the things that people are worried about. That when they start doing that, then you can start complaining. But it's not really a gear grind because there isn't a whole set of ascended gear you have to get right now. And I think a lot of it is uh, people who are just misinformed. People who don't watch YouTube videos, people who don't read blogs, people who don't read patch notes. And, well, you know. when it first happened, we didn't have a whole lot of information. You could read into it a number of different ways. They basically said, you know, this, this is going to be available, and this is, you got to get it from this dungeon, and you need it to progress deeper into the dungeon. And some people said, oh, gated content, this is against everything, rah, 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 rah. And then it slowly became obvious that you don't need this gear at all until you've done the dungeon 10 times. You can see everything in the dungeon without getting the gear at all. So it's absolutely not gated content, which was my first initial reaction. I was like, what? I'm reading that. This is a... Oh, okay. Never mind. You're cool. We're cool. <laughs> all okay. right. So, Matt, your thoughts. What do you think about this? Uh, the, the agony, the infusion, uh, and, and sort of the, the next step in the gear. Is this something that you think is good for the game, bad for the game? Why? What's up? My first reaction was like, finally. Like, I, I, I kind of, it kind of seems like it was kind of rushed though, don't you think? Because it seems like everyone's like, oh, there's no end game, there's no end game, rah, 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 rah. and then they like, okay, we, we got to put something out. We got to put something out, and then they put it out in November. I mean, it hasn't even been a couple months, and then all, they're already coming out with this type of content, even though, you know, Lost Shores wasn't as epic as we thought it would be. They, that dungeon is really what we were looking for. Um, with the, the gear, I, I, I was hoping that the, it would be the full set of armor, but then when Dante was telling me, he was like, oh, no, they're just releasing part of it. And I was like, oh, okay, well, then they'll, I, I guess they'll release it every couple months. You come back to the game, 
and you're like, oh, okay, I can get a new piece of armor just in they case if that, someone is not playing. Because yeah. it's they, we were talking about this because they have that website where it's like guildwars2.en slash whatever, and it shows you like November's event is the Karka thing. And, mm. you know, if you and have a Winter's brain, Day, you're like, yeah. December's event is Christmas yeah. theme. Yeah. <laughs> you obviously, so January will probably yeah. bring us some... New Ascension gear. Another... another th th I, don't, I don't want, like, when I talk to people about this, my focus isn't on the gear because I, it's, it's, I played WoW for six years. I get... I understand gear. I'm more interested in Guild Wars as a game uh, because of how they can approach releasing content. Like the like putting out a new zone and having there be like a story to it and some drama and whatever. I like that. Putting in a couple of pieces of gear, which is fine. But we probably won't see anything until January, and then February will probably be Valentine's Day, Tyria version, and then <laughs> March will be blah blah blah. So people are like, oh my god, ascended weapons, and that's where I think a lot of people were freaking out because I got tells left and right, and they're like, server, because you're gonna have Twilight, blah blah blah, and everybody else, and it's just like. <laughs> yeah, but that's not going to happen because we're not going to really see. I think weapons will be the very last thing that they make. They probably will. They've, they've stated already they, that legendaries will be yeah. raised in stats to be equivalent to ascended items, essentially, when yeah. they do release the, the ascended weapons uh, eventually in the future. So, there, there are, I mean, I had some concerns about it. I think they could have done the same thing and introduced the agony mechanic and, and, and those things uh, and the infusers without creating a new gear tier. Now, it, it remains to be seen how difficult it will be to get ascended gear. I mean, are they going to, like, when they start releasing things that are craftable, like, are, are they going to start releasing craftable rings and things like that you can make as a jewel crafter? Things like that. Because one of the tenets and one of the things that people liked about Guild Wars 2 is when you get to max level, you can very easily get a set of exotic gear. It might not be ex the exact stat combination you want, it might not be the exact look, but you can get that gear and at least be the the right power level compared to everybody else. So I read this comment on Reddit. This is uh, his name is quote my name is my own unquote <laughs> nice and hard to pronounce on the audio stream. Okay, so he said as a hardcore player, I look forward to Fractals of the Mor Molten Core. I mean Fractals of the Mist. I think I will really enjoy collecting my fire resist. I mean ascended gear again because I enjoy all the artificial non skill based progression gates. I think people like that need to fall into a <laughs> fire pit and die because yeah. that kind of feedback is not very representative of what this game is. I think, in fact, that's probably somebody who doesn't care. So I think that's I think that's some that's not a Guild Wars player <laughs> for sure. It's not constructive at all either. It doesn't even say kind of what they're looking for or what they would rather making, it would be. It's just insults. Yeah, so just you guys didn't World you guys Warcraft. didn't read the, the the show notes where I where I labeled this particular link. Fantastic comment that sums up Bridger's thoughts. <laughs> but oh, no, well, no, but no really. I really hope <clears throat> not. No, I, originally, yes. That's a very good example of what people have been saying, though. And, and that's not really going to be the case. That was my original thought. When that's I wrote that really down nice. was I didn't realize how the, how, how the dungeon was going to be. I was worried about the gated content concept, and it's not there. So I don't have the same concept anymore. I think it's great. I mean, the fractals are a really great way for ArenaNet to put in new content because there are content hungry people. I'm one of them. I, as Don Dane said, I played WoW for a very long time. I'm used to having new content fed to me and having to grind for gear. Personally, Guild Wars 2, I'm not really too fussed about the gear, but the content is I really want to play and with these fractals they don't have to make a whole new zone and put a dungeon in and find the lore to go with it they can just you know create a fractal and have it as a backstory wherever in Guild Wars history and people can play it and they haven't got to be like wait this hasn't happened there's not a zone to complement this and they can just keep adding fractals in every month if they wanted to and they wouldn't have to really explain it but we still get new content so I personally think it's the best thing to happen to Guild Wars 2. I honestly think that the guy who makes the comment and says blah blah blah, this is like molten core. I don't even think their their analogy is good enough. I would like to even challenge them and say this: the fractals of the mist is more like caverns of time than molten core. So, <laughs> well, yes. If you want yeah, to be accurate, the <laughs> there's also a bonfire you can fall into as well somewhere too. That's true. It's stupid. So let's let's talk about the agony thing because the whole point of this new gear tier in part is because it's going to allow you to have infusers to put into your armor which gives you resistance against agony and agony is simply uh, based on what somebody posted here on reddit this is the information that we know agony kicks in at a fractal level difficulty of 10 
Normal mobs do not inflict agony. Only the end boss of each fraggle would have, have abilities that inflict agony. The ones that we experienced are as follows. He puts a bunch of information. It seems to hit for about one-eighth of your maximum health per tick if you have no resistance. If you get hit with agony, it seems to tick three or four times. If you have five agony resistance, i.e. one infusion, this damage is halved, so about one-sixteenth of your max health. You can use immunity skills if you have them to avoid the damage, like a, a warrior shield block, for example, or a guardian bubble or something like that you can also dodge out of those attacks so it seems like the agony mechanic is just an additional punishing mechanic for people who are not dodging the boss's attacks properly to that to some effect and that the infusers make it a little bit easier if you make mistakes is that sum up you know what you guys have seen so far yeah, the only thing I would say is that you do actually experience agony from fractal level one in the cliffside one. When you're carrying the hammer, you actually get stacks. And when you hit 30 stacks of agony, you insta die. Is that <laughs> agony or is that just... I thought that was, I thought that was called agony. I'm not no, sure. No, I don't I'm think wrong. that's the same thing. I think that's its I own special condition. I think it was kind condition. of the same, but okay, maybe I'm wrong. I, I, I'm 95% <laughs> sure that was called hammer corruption when you hover over it, not agony. And only oh. because it didn't actually slowly drain your health the way that they've described that's agony actually, would. Yeah, that's true. It kind of just okay. killed you after 30 stacks or so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that really makes sense after I said it. I was like, hmm, 30 stacks, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I guess it's kind of the same kind of thing we looked forward to, though. All right, so let's talk about Fractals of the Mist because... I, quick, I, just, oh, sorry, want a quick, I just want to quick point this out because I don't think anybody will. But um, the thing that people have to remember about the agony and level 10 plus and stuff is that's not part of a gear grind that's that's content that that is there for the people who want something to challenge them not everybody in guild wars wants something to challenge them um personally i play this game because i enjoy an mmo that i don't have to play every day i, I like playing other games i like playing black ops 2 mm -hmm. i like you know I, I like going to the bar and seeing my friends that's why i play guild wars so and it's very good that that is in the game because people do want something that, that gives them a challenge. You don't have to get any of this stuff. It doesn't, you know, you're not like, oh my god, I gotta get Ascended gear, but, you know, so. Yeah, it's, if you get, if, if once they release a full set of Ascended gear, it's gonna be something like an 8% difference in stats. The same kind of difference that you see between uh, the... The, the other tiers of gear between rare and exotic, for example. So it's not going to be necessary for things like World vs. World, but uh, to me, I really kind of would have liked if that difference was smaller. I don't mind the agony thing and, and you know, say, okay, you have to get this gear in order to get to the higher levels of the fractals. Fine, okay, I, I don't really have a problem with that, but I liked... One of the main things that drew me to Guild Wars 2 was the concept that you don't have to uh, spend a huge amount of time grinding for gear if you don't want to. And I think you still don't have to, but you are going to be slightly weaker than other people. If you leave the game and come back, you know, next September and everybody else has Ascended gear and you're still with your exotic set, now you're going to, oh, I can't, you know, play World vs. World or I'm going to be at a disadvantage unless I go grind this, this dungeon for a while. It won't be as massive as, like, WoW, though, where you would be gone for, like, a month and realize you've got to do 10 raids before you can even get the same gear. So Very I think, true. Yeah, to a point, you will be like a little bit disadvantaged, but it don't think people should, you know, get in a hissy and think, oh my god, it's just like, wow, and they said it wouldn't be like that, you'd come back anytime. Like, don't worry, it will just be like five stats different on each, you know, stat category, so, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so let's talk about Fractals of the Mist then. Matt, what do you think about the system that they used in in here. I mean, it's a very different system. Why don't you describe it maybe for people who couldn't get to play this weekend so far? Well, <clears throat> from what I learned is that you, you go inside a dungeon, you get a, a random three of the nine du mini dungeons. You get a random... I think they call them fractals, but then you fractals. also get fractals as a currency. It's very confusing, but yes. Yep. That's right. <laughs> you get five fractals for each fractal that you complete, so... <laughs> Um, at the end of those three fractals, you'll get 15 fractals at the end. <laughs> Fractalception. <And every> two, <laughs> every two, uh, like, or, all right, so you go in, you defeat three fractals, and then you get ported back to the hub. And then you do it again, and you get a random three, but the difficulty will be higher. Now, every, from what I heard, every two, so it'll be two, four, six, eight, 
um, you're going to fight a boss, mm -hmm. and that boss is going to be insanely, insanely hard. And, well, people are going to learn how to defeat it fast, but those bosses are actually pretty hard. And then from that, you're going to get a chest, which is supposedly going to give you good stuff, but I haven't really got any good stuff. I have, like, over 150 magic fine, and my friends, my guildies that don't have any magic fine at all, and they probably even have rare armor, they're getting exotics, and I'm getting, like, nothing. Yeah. But so I far, I only got, like, 20 fractals for beating the boss, and it took us, like, two hours. All right, so, so. What, what do you think about the system so far compared to the system that they have in the game, the, the sort of explorable mode? Matt, what do you think? Do you like the new system, the fact that you get these sort of random mini dungeons versus the explorable mode? I like it a, a lot better. It's... It's... It gives you something for your time, like how they used to do when they used to spawn a chest every boss. You know, you get like, you do a mini dungeon, and you could probably speed clear it, and you get a reward at the end. You get like two chests, like every fractal, don't you? And I think so. I mean, uh, like, there's at least one. one. one at there least might one. be a chest in some of them, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Some of them have a bonus chest. Might be yeah, all of them, and I just haven't found them. I think you get like the dredge one after you complete the dredge by the little car thing, you get a chest, and I think you get another one after you fight like the elemental or the dredge suit. So I think some you get like a special one if they're like big boss or Yeah, end. there's there's one ob obvious chest you get at the end, but then there's a couple others that I've found that you can get a special chest if you do this special thing that you have to figure out or it's secret. It's less obvious. You're not supposed to figure it out right away. You know, it's not for everybody to know instantaneously. Right. You don't point it at point it out. Um, so, so now there have been some thoughts about the Fractals of the Mist system f sort of fracturing the community because now, even right today, I'm able to go into a level 3 dungeon and that's the max I can do. And other people in the Team Legacy Guild I'm on TeamSpeak with and they're like, anybody want to go with a level 11? Looking for level 11? I'm like... <laughs> what? I can't yeah. do that. I'm not going to be able to do that for a while. And if I want to say, hey, I I'm going to do a level three, you want to come? They're like, why don't I go with you? I just, that's way, it's crappy rewards, no way. You know, I got this infusion gear, I'm going for a level 11. So it really has split up the community. Dante, do you think it's worth it? Is it worth it to split up the community? Yeah, do, do you think the, the sort of, <clears throat> the little mini dungeon, the whole system they put in place, do you enjoy it enough to make it worth do you think it's worth the, the sort of fracturing of the community in that sense? I think that from, from, from people who've run it in my guild who talk to me about it, you... Yeah, it, fra it fractures the community. I don't know. I don't... It, it, it does, but it doesn't. Like, it doesn't force you to, like, oh, I have to do level 11 stuff because you can run um, level one, two, three, whatever, uh, you can run level lower level fractal stuff with um, other lower level players. Mm -hmm. So look, I guess, I guess the answer is like, if you want, if you think it fractures fraction or uh, breaks up the community, then just don't be a dick and you won't break up the community. <laughs> like play with your friends. I mean, I get that. Cause there are people in my guild who are like, yeah, I'm fractal level seven. And I'm like, congrats, but it's, you I'm know, still level and, one. and th that's gonna happen, yeah. And yeah. no one's gonna run dungeons with Matt because he's yeah. level one. Because <laughs> I was yeah. actually busy, you that's know. I was like, thing. oh, I come in and go, like, all right, man, let's do some dungeons. Hey, are, are you level 11, it's... man? I'm like, I ain't even start yet. It's like, I'm sorry, man. I don't feel like <laughs> well, it's worth it to go down. Like, the, the good news is that you still get five fractals per fractal even yeah. if you're doing level one. So you do get some semblance of rewards and there still does seem to be a decent chance to get rares in there. You may not necessarily have a high, you know, cause they say that the, the rewards get better and better as you go. I didn't get deep enough to really judge how much better they get. But uh, I, I know that throughout the, I think well, I did the three, then the three, then the final boss, I got at least two or three rares in those runs between, you know, the boss drop and the, and the chest. So it's certainly worthwhile just in getting the ectos uh, it may not be as worthwhile as the higher tier ones, but I think they've done enough to make those lower level ones possible that the don't be a dick doctrine, you know, coined today by Dontaine might just work out in everybody's favor. Well Let's be honest, like in every sort of MMO, there's always going to be that fight between the casual and the hardcore players. If you're someone who is already level 11 and you will only play with other level 11 people, that's your own problem, I feel. And I think that the more casual players who are going to be at a slower pace and probably have the more majority of people at their same kind of level are going to benefit from it. So 
as Dontaine said and Matt as well, like you just need to play with your friends. If you're complaining about it, just just slow down. You're still getting the rewards for it. And I think you just need to enjoy it because this is the best content by far, I feel. And it's just something you just need to play through. And the main focus really is getting that boss down each day and getting the daily because you get 20, I think, fractal, mm -hmm. whatever they're called. You get 20 <laughs> of those for the daily. So as long as you do like three fractals you can go up a level anyway in a daily so in a week you'll get to level seven if you do it every day so you know. <laughs> Aths, Aths, in the chat says there's no casual players in rpgs stop mixing it up <laughs> 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 that doesn't exist all right so um what is the best one that you guys have played so far i think i did a total of about five or six Ooh. of them uh but <laughs> what's your favorite dante which one do you like the best? Oh, the giant, the one, the yes. giant. Doctor Manhattan. Yes. I love uh, Doctor yeah. Manhattan. I I think Cliffside as well. That is so cool. He's just he's giant, and you have no idea why you're helping him except the Asura. <laughs> the voice in your head is telling you, "Oh, you should probably help him get out." <laughs> and you're like, "Really?" <laughs> and he just bows and walks away, and there's yeah. just no explanation. You're just like. <laughs> That made me feel like I was playing another game for a second. I was yeah. like, whoa, this is Guild Wars 2? Like, you just watch him just... The mechanics are awesome as well. Like, wow. like the, the way you had to balance who was carrying the hammer. And, that was you know, very cool. Through, like, the kind of jumping puzzle, little dark room kind of puzzle situation I had to go through, as well as the different ways of, like, you know, when you got to the bit where there was two seals you had to break for ages, we were like, why is... We can't break this again. Like, oh, there's another seal on the other side. Run round and yep. get that one. So I thought, yeah, that's the one that's got the most kind of mechanics that you need to work out. Definitely the one that took the longest to kind of figure out what to do. Yeah, I... And I, the dredge is the worst, by the way. I haven't yeah. played no, that one. I think why is it the worst? Land is easily the worst. The one to get the three wrists. <laughs> the three oh. wrists you have to put in them holes. If you don't oh, have man. a mesmer, you gotta, just, you just quit. Coordinate. If you don't have uh, a mesmer, just yeah, quit just and try just a new it, yeah. one. It's like we we had a few thieves uh, looking for groups. Fractals of the Mist must have mesmer. Please send tell. <laughs> uh, I was speaking to Will about it. As you know, it's like the dun one of the dungeon designers, and he was like, "You just need to jump up and down like a schizoid wild PvP player." And I'm like, "It doesn't work, man. You cannot get from that side to that side in time." <laughs> He's like, "You could do it." But me and my guild managed to do it today, the first time. But again, we had a mesmer, so Thor I don't know. bear traps. Ah, yeah. And the stupid things. We had a situation Wire. where we got three, all three of them, like, were heading towards the home stretch, and the stupid wall closed on us like it knew we were coming every time. Yeah. Until you we can had, jump over them. You can, you can jump, jump over, over the walls? It's really glitchy. Yeah. You have to glitch jump your way up, but it's oh. not... Oh, it's if, annoying. If you, learn, if you learn the pad, you can see, like, you can just jump onto the trunk and jump right over. And oh, that's, that's that. the only way we were able to do it. Because it closes every single pathway as soon yeah. as you walk by it. Yeah. It's so evil. Yeah, it is. Man, damn you, Dungeon Designer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I mean, gosh. it was a great idea. I love how that moss man just shows up, attacks you for a little bit, and then he's like, yeah, I'm out, away. see ya. What? Who's this moss man? Why is he fighting us? What's going on? <laughs> That's the point. Another thing about the fractals is that I didn't actually realize this because I didn't really talk about it that much, but a lot of them have alternate endings. So there's like the, uh, the water one. You could either be a dolphin or you have to collect these little light orb plants. On the swamp one, you either fight the, uh, the tree ant thing or you fight the moss man. Um, what else? The dredge one. You either fight an ice elemental or you fight the dredge suit. So not only oh. do you have nine fractals, a lot of them have multiple endings, which I didn't know. If you've I didn't know that either. You've only seen one. Yeah. A lot of them have multiple endings. I've done, uh, I did the ice elemental or the dredge one, and I've also done the moss man and the, uh, the tree thing on the swampland one, and I've done both on the underwater. So definitely a lot of them have multiple endings. Oh, so you didn't do the dredge suit. So you don't no, know. No, I've not done know. the dredge suit. No, not done it. Oh, oh, it's evil. It's the most <laughs> evil thing in the game. Like, you have to get the suit automatically heals, by the way, if you hit it while it's down. <laughs> and then it walks. You have to get it under the oil and pour oil yeah, on it. Yeah, you do that for the ice elemental as well. I oh, really? Oh, it's a different model? <laughs> We're all like, oh, man, boy. this is awesome. Like, Marina Net really outdid themselves. And nope, they switched the models. <laughs> the like, you, can't, you can't damage it unless it's on fire or something. I'm not sure. But um, right, also, big, another thing that changes is 
don't know if this is, I'm not going to spoil it, I'll just like, but also when you get to certain levels of number, so say, you know, we're all on like level four or five or whatever, when you actually get past level five and you get in the six to ten bracket, some of the paths actually change. And Cliffside, oh. our favourite one with the uh, giant, the path you actually take to go up is actually different. So oh. that it also happens. And those yeah. stupid spikes. Er, we actually on oh. Cliffside. They fixed those, <laughs> apparently. They got worse. <laughs> <laughs> they were too easy. <laughs> yeah. We, we realized after a fashion that you could you could see them. If you brought your camera low to the ground, they would be sort of raised above the ground, the little area where the spikes were. That was kind of interesting. But uh, we had a situation where we foremaned that all the way to the top because someone fell to their death. And then we sent some. We sent a mesmer. Like, oh, that's okay. We'll send the mesmer. He'll portal, and then he'll portal down, and then we'll get him right back up. And we didn't know this at the time. If we just all jumped to our deaths, we could start right right where we were. <laughs> <laughs> with yeah, a checkpoint. We, stopped, we yeah. didn't know that for a fact, though. I was like, I thought I read that, but I don't know. He's like, we can do it with four people. Let's just go. And so the poor guy was lying down at the bottom, and we started to send somebody down for him, and that guy fell to his death about halfway down, and we said, screw it. We're just going to get him up and go. <laughs> and then we all wiped on the boss, and then we respawned, and we were like, oh, sorry, Joe. We didn't mean to leave <laughs> you down there. <laughs> yeah, that happened to me. Like, the first one I did of Cliffside actually took us a second time I did it, it was like a 20 minute run, but oh, yeah. trying to figure out that hammer thing and getting everyone up past the little, because obviously the wind blowing is pretty obvious from those heads, but you know, the little explosions you get like, like yeah. up the pass. At first I was just like, I've never encountered this mechanic. Like, I don't know. I just <laughs> what get explosions? blown off. The yeah, explosions, <laughs> why are they making me fall off the edge? And I have so much fun. I've had more fun in these fractals than I have in any dungeon. I'll, I'll be honest, like I'm a massive Guild Wars 2 fan girl. I've not done Crucible of Eternity, Honor of the Waves. Um, I've not done pretty much any of them on Explore Mode, any of the dungeons apart from Sorrow's Embrace and Ara. Yeah. But I just, what was the point? Like, let's be honest, why do I need to do them? I've got full exotics. I don't like the gear sets, so I'm not gonna do it. The fractals come in, I'm like, I must get ascended gear. Oh, the, difficulty. <laughs> the difficulty is completely scaling. It's like, I must be the best on my server. I must get to like level 100 on fractals just so I can pimp <laughs> myself out. Like, that is motivation and it's working. A ring that are going to keep bringing us back when they bring out more fractals and like more ascended gear. And essentially, they're a business. They need to make money and it's working. So, well done, Arena, yeah. I think. But yeah, I, I think the fractals. You know, despite our, you know, oh, the Swampland, grr, it was, it was fun <laughs> because it was challenging yeah. and we had to try and figure it out. And the, the, the only thing that I could say is, as I wish there was a little bit more information, like if there was something at the end that told you who was that crazy blue man, instead you just get the right. Sarah yeah. going, I wonder who that was. So much data <laughs> to analyze. This is great. <laughs> but this could be like a follow on fractal. Maybe we'll see him again in the future and we'll all be like, oh my God, I remember him. And I think that'd be, it'd be cool to kind of like, if they did release more fractals for them to be kind of follow-ons and tell us a little bit more about the story and so we can kind of learn and our little lore nerds can get excited. But would, but would that be after a certain point or would that just be mixed in in the beginning from level one? That's the question. May yeah, that's the point. Like if you suddenly just got this random blue one, you'd be like, who is it? Do yeah, I see what you if mean. If they do yeah. that, they're going to be think, like, I think hey, they... hey, 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 Arena Net, I can't do this i can't get to that level so i'm not gonna be able to play that new content and people are gonna complain so they gotta be very careful even though i would love to see the giant again i want to know or maybe <laughs> like it'll actually be a dungeon or something so maybe if we get a new zone and we actually have a proper dungeon that isn't a fractal okay. maybe that will include the blue man or you know right. maybe it might be an inner zone will actually find out that he's like a god of, I don't know, the quaggins or something. No, but, uh... no, no. Everybody, they had it right. I was in there, and he bows to us, and I typed slash bow, and it was like achievement unlock. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then somebody in our team speak says, goodbye, Dr. Manhattan. Good luck. <laughs> and we're like, yes, that's who it is. Of course. He's trapped in Tyria for some reason. After he oh, leaves. Did he have pants on? He did have pants on, so maybe he has grown... Uh, shy oh, from this age. I didn't look down there. <laughs> Another thing is that everyone's complaining about content, but realistically, it's something that every single level can do because you can get scaled up for it. So it's like, I don't know, I just can't see why people are complaining about the fact that there's a little bit of extra gear in there, but they're giving you something and saying, hey, if you can't be bothered to level to 80 because you're lazy, because let's be honest, it's really easy, come to fractals and you'll get boosted to level 80 and you can still play with your friends. It's like, literally, Arena are giving us everything on a plate and trying to please every single person. 
and then people are just complaining about the fact that oh there's a little bit of extra gear i i just seriously think like they need to evaluate their situation <laughs> Can't please everybody, you see. You can't. <laughs> it's true. There's so many people, different people play Guild Wars 2, it seems. The people who play WoW, the people who want to be casual yeah. and just play with their friends. The people, people that who want, don't want gear Skyrim. Progression. People who do want gear, gear progression. It's like so much. Guild Wars 2 is not Skyrim. <laughs> they got a hard job. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. All right. So, yeah, Fractals of the Mist, definitely awesome. Uh, I'm definitely going to want to play it until I... And, I'm interested to see how it gets harder. I, I I wonder if they could add another layer. Like, it would be interesting if this difficulty level ended at, like, 30, and then you don't get any more beyond that, but then that would be gated content. No, I kind of wish that they could do more things like fractals, but I don't know how they're going to add it. I mean, you're right. That's ugh. Okay. Yeah. It's really hard. I wish, though, the only thing I wish that they would put in was that we could exchange the fractal tokens for dungeon tokens so that Ooh. people could just run fractals and get those tokens and then <laughs> get the gear that they wanted because, or just even the skin, maybe. Maybe you could transfer fractals into, like, dungeon token skins so you weren't cheating and getting exotic, <laughs> so maybe you could steal the looks you wanted. There you go. There you Do you know what I mean? Maybe one day I'll want to role play as a, I don't know, something. Um, <laughs> I, I, get, I don't know if this will be off topic, but you know they have um, obsidian shards inside of that fractal dungeon. Oh, yeah, you now. can buy them from the vendor, right? <laughs> they also yeah. nerf karma farming, so it seems like that's the new way to get obsidian shards as set for karma. So you won't have to do a million karma. You will just have to do the dungeon 500 times. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's all. No problem. Just casual 500 times. Yeah. Well, it won't be exactly 500 times. It depends if you're going from one to whatever fractal. But and If you're doing the daily boss and getting the extra Yeah, 20. and if you're doing level two, if you're consistently doing level two because it's easy for you or something like that and you fight the <laughs> boss after it or... I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot, of pe lot of ways you could probably farm it for the best results, but no one has really found out yet. But and if you guys know what the, I'm looking uh, forward gift, to that. The fractal gift is for. Well, I can't remember what exactly it's called. Yeah, there, you know, there is something gift of fractals what is or that? gift of the and mist. It's like an ascension. 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 What is that for? Like it's obviously it might not be for, for the armor. It might be for the armor. Maybe. Maybe. It would make sense because um, you would. I would hope they would make the armor tradable so you can sell it so you can make some type of money well, somebody, off of a dungeon. Somebody mentioned that the that you upgrade ascended gear from one step to another. Like yeah, somebody mentioned back, something like yeah. you get you you get like the basic back piece and it's the same stats as normal exotics, but you can upgrade it. Maybe the gift of ascension is something you need to throw into the Mystic Forge with the back piece and obsidian shards or something else, or fractals, and in order to upgrade it to the ascended piece or something to that effect. Mm. And someone just mentioned in the chat, quivers are in game. Um, that's a oh, back yeah. piece you can actually forge in the Mystic Forge, which it is ascended, and it actually looks like a it's quiver, like a bow and arrow quiver. Mm -hmm. All right. That's I saw that. about time. Back pieces are really cool for like rangers and if, yeah. if you're a guardian, you want a book just like what they had. I have a I have the book on my necro, the flaming the fire book. book. Yes, you know exactly. I want some really cool useful. stuff. Maybe some wings, maybe in the future. Ooh, yeah. Then you could be some like rainbow wings. Oh, Ooh. they gotta have like a special <laughs> serif dungeon where you can get like a rain like a like a serif wings back piece. That'd yeah, be cool. Okay. <laughs> There's so many things you can do with that and. I mean, they're probably going to save it for gem store stuff, but let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's let's move on. The fractals awesome, ascended gear. Okay. <laughs> let's see what's going on with the Sunshore Cove. So, we mentioned lag. Uh <laughs> the Lions Arch event. I logged in on Friday. I got home early from work. I was like, I'm ready to go, let's do this. And everybody's like, it's starting. And I'm like, no, I'm still loading in the Lion's Arch. Five minutes later, I'm still loading in the Lion's Arch. Damn yeah. it. And <laughs> finally got in there, and I see everybody fighting something. But I can't see the thing they're fighting. And I'm like, ah, what's going on? And I left, and I come back, and I finally have sound again. And I can finally f see them fighting the Karka. And I'm like, oh, this is great. And I go in there, and I do some fighting, fight in my, okay, I need to heal. Click, click. I need to heal. <laughs> Dead. Why aren't you working? <laughs> Dead. Damn it. And then you have to do the waypoint, and then you have to load all over <laughs> no, again. No, not loading. Yep. 
my my only weakness. Um, so <laughs> the other thing, the other thing it made me think of is whenever you had to fight the Karka, you know, you got him down to zero, and then bam, they're in a new, <laughs> they, their armor falls off. I kept thinking every time I went to fight a Karka. This isn't even my final form. It's like, no. <laughs> There's two more life bars in there. I oh, mean, like, every game has this problem. I don't know if any of you guys played Rift, but when Rift did the River of Souls event, it was their first major kind of big event where there was going to be loads of people there. And the lag was horrendous. No one could see anything. And I would have thought that, like, a year later, ArenaNet would have learned from this and tested it more. Like, where were the public stress tests? Like, where is there like a public test server that WoW has that we can go on and they can test these events and or just test an event to see you know it could be reskinned it could be anything we're fighting against just to see what the servers are like with that many people like Matt said in Lions are to all places they could have attacked anywhere the law wasn't like irrelevant you know where it was it could have been like the grove when it no could have been knows. blood tide no, coast you could have spread everybody yeah. over the entire blood tide coast if you wanted to yeah. instead you got everybody in like a two square meter spot of lions aren't you fighting them and you can't even gonna... see someone that's right next to you i mean it's just like <laughs> yeah it's like dude revive me dude i don't know where you at like... <laughs> it doesn't even i got no f <laughs> My F doesn't even work. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, it's like no one to revive. Oh, but <laughs> but to be fair, I did not experience it nearly that badly when we actually got to the shores the next day. Uh, yeah. And and that it, so they did do something to fix it. I don't know if it's just being a bigger zone, so it's people are more spread out, uh, or the fact that it's Arch. not Lions Arch. Yeah, maybe they they need to learn not to do events in Lions Arch anymore. And just right off Lions Arch. Arch. And even today's event, like there was a lot of people there, and I didn't have a single bit of lag really. I had a couple of spikes, I think, when a lot of stuff was going on, but apart from that, the lag was fine today. All right. So anyway. Uh, Dante, did you play through the investigation events that took place after that big, uh, the big Karka infestation? Uh, yeah, I tried until they broke and then they <laughs> turned them off yeah. the next day. There's a lot of, there's a lot of how I feel about these events and, uh, to be safe so that, you know, I don't put my foot in my mouth later on. I usually just end up backing off and saying like well maybe arena will learn from these i mean these are just their first two events and blah 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 and that's what i want to see i want to see them learn from because th them doing this thing in lion's arch is them trying to because they did this whole like well invite your friends and they'll get scaled up to 80 and they'll maybe play this game like <laughs> look if they're, if they're not interested they're not interested okay like you don't need to do this and then ruin everybody else's fun time um I think it's a challenge that they need to figure out. They need to figure out how are they going to service the players that play their game and uh, entice people to come and play the game. And you can't, um, you can't give everybody what they want. Uh, uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, not everybody can be pleased, just like with the idea of Ascension gear and whatnot. So I would like, the, I would like events in the future to not be laggy and boring and stupid because that, to me, that's, that sums up my experience with this event. The Karka are, are stupid. They're a stupid monster that you can't kill. It takes a long time. Mm. It, there's it's arbitrarily no reason for it. They 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 evade everything. They like their combat rotation is eighty percent evading, which doesn't help <laughs> that they have three health bars. And all I think, and I'm not a game designer, but as a player and as a critic, I just think this is poorly thought out. This is a Dante and rant. Hopefully they, hopefully, no, no, I mean, if, if I were, yeah, well, you clearly don't know what my rants sound like, but um, I think that if, if they were to, I hope that they, that's what I hope, I just hope they learn from it. That, that was the most disappointing thing. Not even, not even the bugs, not the mobs themselves, because those are legit complaints. There's plenty of cool things about them, but them turning off the scavenger hunt, which they gives you like a off, jug though. of karma. They, it's not they, like, it's not like it was Halloween. I don't think they turned it off. They said specifically they, they were going to leave it open through phase two for people. It's not, though. I, was like, it's not, no, I haven't finished it. I, I managed to get the I map piece, it. the thing from the Largos guy, and then the rest of it was completely bugged and then disappeared, basically. Well, the Largos guy disappeared, but they had a chest there that you could just go and loot and you get the thing anyway. I was, I guess, lucky enough because I was able to get the thing from the Hylic and from the... Um, from the Quaggan before they wound up bugging. 
So I got lucky in that result. And, and then the Largos, mm -hmm. they just fixed by getting rid of the Largos and saying, here, have a chest instead. <laughs> yeah, and I guess it might be something to do with overflow or not or whatever. Again, it, it, it's, I, I just fall back on the, you know, I'll let it slide now. Uh, maybe they'll learn from it. But your experience was not my experience. I went mm. immediately to the Largos guy because that's where, because I did, because there's two scavenger hunts. There's two, like, paths that you can Right. Like there's the Miani do. one, the and then crack. there's the, the, the beach one that starts on the beach there. <laughs> yeah. And I just was like, Le this is where I left off yesterday. This is a weekend-long event. Nothing was there. I couldn't... The chest, I found the chest, but I couldn't interact with it. Oh, and, really? Yeah. And I was just like, okay, they don't want me to finish this. But you only get a jug of karma. And I only really cared because I'm close to finishing my weapon. And I'm like, jugs of karma are really, really cool. I like I think, I think actually, I was disappointed. You get a jug of karma from the one that starts on the beach, but... When I finally finished the, the Miani one, I think I just got commendation tokens, the captain's commendations. I didn't get a jug of karma from the Miani one, if I recall correctly. Uh, Do you so feel like they, they should have sent everyone who like even got one or two pieces of jug of karma in the mail anyway? Like, Dante, how do you feel? Do you feel like they should have been like, hey, I'm sorry you can do it, here's the reward anyway? Because it, it wasn't your fault that you can do it, it was theirs. Uh, I mean, if it was like a real reward, like if they had if they had botched this up and it was Halloween, like, oh, hey, you participated, but we broke the scavenger hunt for like book one, you know, the um, Mad Memories version one or whatever. And... And then they were to be like, oh, here, this was the reward. Thanks for playing. We're sorry we, you know, screwed this up. Then I'd be, I'd be like, hey, where's my refund? But it's just a jug of karma, like, you know. And But then again, do you look at that and then go, well, that's a pretty poop reward. Why make me run around for nothing? <laughs> yeah. Well, I liked, I liked the idea of sort of investigating the consortium. Like, this is, this is like some potentially malicious or, or malfeasance in business practices where they went to exploit this island and accidentally angered the native Karka and like they're at fault here and we have to find out you know who was responsible for this and I liked that but it didn't really go anywhere it really just uh, ended with okay we found a guy who probably was the bad guy and we got him to confess and we brought back the information and Lion's Arch guys are like thanks here's a jug of karma and I was like whoa purple this can't be good so it just Halloween seems... had more character. Yeah, yeah. It, it felt like, I mean, f there was a ton of damn content, right? I mean, there was the investigation, yeah. there was the big Lion's Arch thing, there was the massive thing that happened today that we're going to talk about in a second, there's the fractals, there's a new PvP map. So, to be fair, we probably got to cut them a bit because we just had this massive Halloween event, now we've got another massive one. Unfortunately, it feels a little rushed. I kind of would yeah. have liked to have seen one of those investigations more polished and sort of finished rather than having both of them, honestly. This is what I've always said about... Sorry, Matt. This is what I've always said about Guild Wars 2 is, like, I always feel like they're trying to push stuff out, and I would rather just wait and have something amazing. Like, I said it about Zaitan when we talked about that. Like, it felt like they just rushed out Ara, and I would have rather have waited till a patch later and then be like, you can finally fight Zaitan. Like, they do it in WoW. You never fight the end boss when it first comes out, so... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It feels like they rushed it. It, it does, because people, you know, people were complaining about all this endgame stuff, like I said before, and they're like, let's toss this new endgame out real quick. It looks like it was supposed to be released way after, like maybe next year. Like, come on, and Guild Wars won it, and it wasn't that fast. It wasn't that fast at all. And the thing is, this weekend was supposed to be for new people to come in, right? Because of the free trial. Yeah. Right? So... This event was supposed to be really good. And I, you put it in Lion's Arch, which is the worst place to put it in. And then so all the new players are coming in and they're like, I can't even play Guild Wars 2. I'm getting like one frame per second. I, I wouldn't like, even yeah. start new players with this big event. That seems like a terrible yeah. thing. It, and the, their, their new player initiation like Queensdale and, uh, and, and Metrica Province and, and Calden, those places are amazing. I would want my new players to be there. I wouldn't want yeah. them to like, because now you have your friends who are like, come play Guild Wars 2. And you like, oh, I got this new character. Let me explore this little new zone. I've got a nice personal story and let me see how the game works. And your friend's like, sorry, can't can't play with you got this one time event i gotta go over here and play exactly. and he's like can i join you yeah if you want but you're not gonna understand anything and you're just like well that really yeah. just splits everybody up i think it was a bad time to do the the free you know it was an exciting time to do it and like lost oh, sure bring your friends yeah. but Mm, no, I don't think it was, it was a good in theory that yeah you could have your friends but I agree I would have much rather have had like the Lost Shore <laughs> event the Fractals bring everyone back to Guild Wars 2 and then say hey 
bring your friends next weekend. Yeah. And, you know, Thanksgiving yeah, weekend. Everybody's off, home, got time. Yeah. There you go. Bam. Exactly. Like. So you're saying it's like communism. It's like good on paper. <laughs> but, <laughs> didn't really work out that well. But we have to give the internet some sort of credit. And I think I would have rather have not had any of the Lovshore content and just give me the fractals and the new pvp map because they are great the fractals is really really great and i kind of feel that yeah. everyone kind of felt a little bit let down by the event and, and it just would have worked in arena net's favor if they just introduced the fractals and been like hey look at this new content everyone would be like oh my god this is amazing but being players and being able to complain about things we've seen the event <laughs> seen the lag and think uh, this is a let down and then people forget the good stuff you know people always focus on the negative don't they so people are now coming from this weekend thinking oh it was laggy it was boring when in reality if they just given us the fractals we would have been like wow this is awesome and right it, it's know. a good thing they it's a good thing they gave us that loot at the end i mean come on a 20 yeah. slot bag oh, yeah. and a really yeah. good earring yes yes thank you arena net i'll take those two exotics please yeah I, I would... that was good <laughs> Did anyone try to um, go to another overflow server and open the chest twice? We mentioned it. I didn't manage to do it, though. But I know someone who did. I think someone um, it earlier. didn't work for <laughs> the people I knew who were trying to do it. You, you can't do it twice on the same character. You have to get right. an alt. Yeah, Ooh. different character and then change to different overlay. But yeah. it's, right. over. it's, it's all over, Matt. You can't. Because it's, <laughs> it's a one-time event. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course. Yes, I forgot. Uh, but, yeah, so let's talk about the second... Uh, section which kicked off on Saturday at precisely three o'clock. You got to give them that credit when they say something starts at noon. It freaking starts with noon at noon. Uh, so that I have to say is uh, is very well done. And then so it's taking back you know the the thing and we get there and we have to secure the beachhead. I thought that was pretty fun. It was a really cool thing. You got to kill all the Karka. I mean, like you said, the Karka are, are sort of uninteresting en en enemies. But when one of those suckers started rolling around and crushing everyone in the whole Zerg. That was hilarious, I have to say. The first time that started happening. Really enjoyed that. And so that whole thing was great. And then we got to the point where they're like, we've got to build roads inland. And I'm like, okay, how are we going to build roads? And we got this team of like lumberjacks you've got to escort. And I'm like, that tree wasn't in my way. I could have just walked right past it. Like, these are the sparsest trees ever. And like, we just got to cut them all down. Why? Because, okay. <laughs> they're going to make it look like ore then. Yeah, cutting exactly. Cutting all those trees down. <laughs> It's just I don't everyone want to like, like, like the bar is close to eyes and they're just back <laughs> down the street. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so there was one good thing that came out of the whole thing, I think, and that is the jumping puzzle on the island. Did you guys play the steam jumping, jumping puzzle one? Yeah. No, I have <laughs> Oh my god, it was so early. Here, this is this is it. What you're seeing right here, this is it. These these rocks get pumped up on the on the steam, and you have to jump on them as they get produced, and they fall down very quickly. So you have to move fast and accurate cool. across the whole thing. And then you get to a certain point, and you get to basically stop and rest. Right here, you get to stop and chill. But then if you fall again, you have to start all the way back at the beginning. And, oh, it was so, <laughs> it's so yeah. frustrating. And it goes on and on. You must go, like, a half a mile on this jumping puzzle. It just keeps going. It's ridiculous. And if you fall at any point of it, all the way to the beginning, sucker. That's just how it is. So this is, this is just ridiculous. But it was, it was really it was difficult and fun because it was difficult. It was like the clock tower in that respect, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all timed. You have to do it all at once. At once, if you fall, you have to start all over. So it's it's really good though. And it had a I pretty like cool chest at puzzles. the end. I have to say, you got a little achievement. I liked that. We lost Kai. And those those two chests as well. Yeah, there was a hidden second chest. If you kept going, it was hidden behind a champion. <laughs> I don't know how you get more than one person up there at a time since it's so hard to do. But then well, you have to fight a champion. Well, everything you need thieves. You, you need just need thieves, thieves for everything. Yeah. That, all you need is thieves. That's, or mesmers. That's how you make the the, the Tyria go around is thieves. <laughs> thieves. Just stealth in there, grab the chest, see ya. Bye. Exactly. <laughs> Portals everywhere. Um, so, okay, so Kai's coming back here in a second. Um, and, yeah, so I, I really enjoyed the jumping puzzle. There was another smaller one in sort of the south east area. I don't know if you guys got that. It was very simple. It yeah. was like one of the little tower jumping puzzles. I was surprised there wasn't a vista up there at the top. But, uh... But yeah, so that was, I thought that I enjoyed that part. What did you guys think? Is there any other comments you have on, on that, uh, 
that that sort of second day of taking back the island? Um, it I I was hoping that all I can think of is man. I hope these events keep cycling around, around, around in the whole area because um, it would be cool to have another place that you can go to have events spawn because now there's like no events like that now. They fix they fixed them all or they nerfed them all. So that's all I could think about when I was playing them. But I well, really like the way. They definitely nerfed them all. They didn't fix anything with what they did with Karma events. Right, they, they nerfed them very bad. But they nerfed, it would they, be They nice. fixed the dungeons, though, right? I mean, you, can, you, you now have an incentive to actually stop and fight the mini-bosses in the middle. Right. So at but, least there's that. Come on, positive! <laughs> but, but, all right, a positive thing was I like the way that you can go around the whole <laughs> island and they were actually building what you see now on the map. Yeah. You so they would watch build, it you see a waypoint would spawn and something like that, and all the the towns were being built because you were helping them go through the whole map. So just, that was really cool, and I was like, I was excited. I was like, man, that, that man, the next tomorrow might be even better, you know, because they got better from Lion's Arch because Lion's Arch was absolutely terrible. <laughs> I love you, Arena, if you're watching. <laughs> Part two. Part two was really I, I enjoyed part two way more way more than the third one, but I definitely like the rewards. Yeah, the, that's the best chest I have ever gotten in Guild Wars two. Gotten yeah. in Guild Wars two. Now now here's a question. Let's move on then to the 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 fighting of the ancient Karka, which was like two hours longer than it should have been. Um, <laughs> due to their stupid shells. If only that investigation had succeeded and we found some special way to take down the Karka shells without having to... Oh, wait, didn't I get some juice from a crazy Hylic I couldn't use yeah, for some reason? What was that big laser gun that was just there but we didn't use? We could have just shot them and, like... No, that was I don't confusing, know, too. Or anything. I didn't worked. see it because everything was clipping out, but I think what happened was when you escort the guys up and they set all the charges, we anger the ancient Karka. He comes out, the laser gun's all powered up, and I saw them shoot at nothing. And then a, a fist appears on the map and says, the ancient Karka has avoided the lasers. I was like, yeah, because he's over there. He's on the other <laughs> side of the mountain. Why did we fire the lasers? Because he was probably there and just did like a super jump move that I couldn't see. <laughs> So that was that was interesting. And then, you know, that whole thing, I thought that was actually really well done with the exception of the reinforcements event. Those events were like a half hour of grinding against veteran Karka wow. that we already ground against before when we were trying to set the charges. It was fun to get crushed by them the first couple of times. But after that, it stopped being fun. But I think that there's a reason... Again. <laughs> There's a, probably a reason for that, though, because they they mentioned that it was a multi-hour event. <laughs> yes. And that oh. they probably wanted people who couldn't make it but were going to be on, you know, sometime uh, to sort of get a chance to jump in there and, um, <laughs> well, and, and get their crack at the Karka and stuff like that, which you normally, I mean, if I, hey, if you, I missed out on it, I'd be mad too, you know? But, I, yeah, well, that's, yes, but that's then why what I think do you tell? So big. What do you tell the people who were able to be on for the first two hours, but then had to leave when they come back and find out they could have got a precursor to a legendary? From oh, you tell them yeah. not to leave. It's a, you tell them that. Why would something you rather have popped in? I'd rather have popped in at the last ten minutes. You totally could have popped in the last ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people no, did. Oh. Tedious. It was so tedious. My it's wife did that. She was like, she was trying to stay awake, but she's like, I'm just, I'm falling asleep. I'm going to take a nap. And she went to sleep for like an hour and a half. And we're I'm like, there might be some good loot. You want to come? She's like, all right. And then she's like, oh, yes, I'm so glad I got up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, the, the, I, I actually really did like it, with the exception of those stupid long-ass reinforcement fights. I thought the whole thing was great. You had to, like, unclog the, the, the what do you call them, the, the geysers, and then throw rocks at the ancient for some yeah. reason. You have to knock a tree down on them. Like, trees are clearly overpowered. <laughs> People <laughs> in the chat were saying, you know, that tree was way more effective. We should plant trees and come back later, and we'll probably still be doing <laughs> <Yeah>. the event. <laughs> Finally, the wood is useful. Yeah. You see trees popping up all the way on lion's arch now. New defense. No, it's like, everybody, <laughs> stop, stop to cutting down the cypress trees. Just leave them. We don't need them. There's plenty on the auction house. 
Yeah, I'll plenty. <laughs> Whew, everybody was like, oh, man, good thing we have so much butter on the auction house. These crabs are going to be awesome. And then we sat there for hours trying to kill one. <laughs> I, I just, I know that, like, it was going to be a multi-hour event, but I would have rather the build-up to be a little bit longer. Like, I felt that, you know, the event started and we went straight into killing Karka. There could have been a little bit more of the preparation like we had in the second part that we had yesterday. And I just felt... If it was going to be a multi-hour event, just let's do some more stuff on the island and get to grips with everything and then have that big boss fight because I'd have rather it just started when we attacked the ancient Karka rather than just fighting all these little ones for like two hours. Yeah. I don't know. It could have been more interesting with less fighting until the actual end event. Because oh. the end bit was good when he started rolling down the hill and like exploding everywhere. Like That was really fun, but... Before that was not. <laughs> there are people in the chat asking where the jumping puzzle is. If you spawn at the lion point on the island and then walk sort of south and east and simply hug the wall, hug the, the sort of um, mountain. The, the mountain, and you just follow the mountain and turn right whenever it turns right, you'll eventually find the beginning of the jumping puzzle. It's those sort of poofy, spiky things, and you'll probably see 20 people trying to do it. Right. <laughs> Everybody was getting pissed at me because I did swiftness. I'm like, it's timed! What do you mean? You should <laughs> want swiftness! You need right. to go fast! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway, so... Ancient Carcass de defeated. We killed probably half a gazillion of them. There can't possibly be any more. What's going to happen on the island now? What are the events going to be? Now that the ancient Karka is destroyed, are we just going to do these same tiny little events that have been here since yesterday? Like, collect Karka eggs for study and, you know... Oh, boy. Repair no. the golem or whatever that one in the middle is? I, are they going to be updating it with new events? Like, that's... Because now they've got this sort of medium-sized zone. Is this a one-time thing? Nobody's going back to the island anymore except to get passion fruit? I, I really I hope they do. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I was just... But like I said before, I, I just really think hopefully they put events there that we can do that will be worth doing. But the the map is not even for map completion. Like it's yeah. total I was like wondering I was like what is this? Is it a useless island just for the event? I, I was expecting a little bit more from the map, like at least some I mean not connected to map completion, but something there. Hopefully after the event there'll be like a patch and it becomes a regular zone that you can go in and there'll be events to do or maybe, well, it can't be a dungeon because they really released a dungeon. <laughs> so it's either that they make it useful and make it a good place to get some karma because they can't, they can't just nerf karma and expect people uh. not to get karma. So Well, you're saying nerf karma, but, you know, last month they changed it so you get 20 jugs of karma every time you complete but monthlies. Daily? And you get a jug of karma for every daily. So, I mean, that's a lot of karma that they added to the system. It's not a, there's a whole, you don't farm karma, though, do you, Bridger? No, I there's don't. There's a whole lot of standing around and doing nothing now. Yeah, and I didn't buy nothing. Guild Wars to stand around and do nothing. Exactly. And Matt's point is, it would make sense from a, from a decision perspective that if you're going to be like, okay, let's, let's tone down, let's put a big cooldown on this Plink's chain of events and all this crap, if post the event from the weekend the island is another karma you know hub place to hang out and and farm karma at um that would make a lot of sense like hey go here you don't have to be in cursed shore anymore go here right. and, but it, what, what's stupid is that if you farm karma you're sick of the cursed shore and you're like you know what have a new <laughs> thing to do so people right. would just leave anyway it's possible that's what it's going to be i know why people are, are, are going to go to the, to the lost shore there's that rich ori calcum vein at the top of the karka <laughs> thing right am i right that's right i bet it's got Until like a remote, one yeah. it's like a one one week watch them take that out something. and be like yeah that was just for the event. and, it, and <laughs> it's not the nerfed one that they nerfed again Man, those dang nerfs. Like, this one is a real one. This one gives you 15. Yeah, I kept hammering away at that thing. I was like, this is great. I'm rich. As everybody else in the world is hammering away at it. I'm like, oh, that just plummeted in price, didn't it? <laughs> I, I, I hope so, because, you know, I need them for the legendary. But, like, that's before. Before, you can just go through ore, and you can mine those things. And when the jumping puzzle in EB was Eternal Battlegrounds in Worldly World. For people who don't know, sometimes I say <laughs> shortcuts. And um, there used to be an Orcalcum vein in there. 
and they, you would mine that thing like three times and get about like 15, at least 12 to like 16 ores. And you can use those to get your legendaries. It's, it's useful yeah. to have those. And they nerfed it. So, so the price would go up, I guess. And the price did. And now it's a lot harder to get them now. So that one, I uh, reminiscing on the old days, just working on the real. <laughs> yeah, <it was> good. <laughs> you know, so good. I have to say that the um, – I had a train of thought, and it just, it, not, it didn't just derail. I'm pretty sure the train doesn't exist anymore. Shit. Uh, I would definitely like to see the island be useful, like, exactly like you're saying, with some kind of karma event set, set up. Maybe they won't be able to really fully flush it out until later, but the few events that are on there are not going to be useful enough, and I don't think they want to redo that ancient fight again and again and again every weekend or what have you. That just that doesn't sound like it's a good idea. Uh, so what could they do on that island? Maybe the Risen could attack. <laughs> <laughs> risen? Oh, no. Th those two together would make a bad mix. Yeah. You know what they need? Constant they need... evade and stun and pull. Oh, wait a minute. Blowing your mind right now. Ready? The Karka are agents of bubbles. <laughs> bubbles? The, the, the Azura, deep sea um... dragon that nobody <laughs> knows who the deep sea dragon is. We don't know anything about it. But they're clearly not Krakatoric. They're clearly not Primordius because they're not on fire. And they're not Jormag because they're not made out of ice. So they must be agents of bubbles. <laughs> what nice then? sense. And I then the will come down. That's the new. That's the next expansion. I'm calling it right here. Bubbles expansion. And I would be happy if it was completely just unrelated. Now, say we take over the. Karka wait a minute. Wait a minute. Forever. Risen Guard is saying the Karka event is going on again. You're saying the ancient fight is happening what? again. What? I thought it was strictly one time. I that thought so too. Maybe it. it's two times. Just today. Maybe by they one time they mean one only today. Time exclusive event. Huh. I'm gonna be like. All right, guys. Um, BRB. I'm gonna BRB. go get my level one. <laughs> I need to get some epic like, loot. Let <laughs> <I> go. <laughs> uh, I wonder which shard that's on. Somebody invite. All right. Uh, so that's interesting. <laughs> um, I guess that's that's about wraps it up. Uh, uh, that's that's sort of all of our thoughts here. Dantane <laughs> half gla glass half empty. <laughs> Kai glass half full. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's like, I don't care about the glass! I got it! I got a legendary! <laughs> uh, I was wondering why you were saying bye so quickly. I was like, oh, oh, you must want to go too? The, uh, the, the other thing is, oh, that's what I was going to say. When we were getting close to, on my shard, the, the, the final showdown with the, with the Ancient, um, other, I was on TeamSpeak with everybody else that was in different shards, and one of them was like, oh man, my friend just got Dawn! And I'm like, oh man! And then somebody on our server was like, sell it! Sell it right now to the highest bidder! That's the best buy you're gonna get, because it's about to crash the market! If everybody has a chance to get a legendary precursor from this thing, sell it yeah. now for 250 Don't try to go for the 400 you're not gonna get it. It's just gonna crash. <laughs> That's oh, probably man. true. It makes me want to buy gems and just buy my precursor now. It's just the oh, market's gonna gosh. crash right now. There's not never gonna unless this event just keeps going and everybody's gonna have the opportunity on every single character they make to get a new uh, a, a new uh, exotic or something. Yeah. Monster says they did crash. So thank you. Um, thank you for the <laughs> confirmation. Uh, the. <laughs> The other thing, they can't possibly just rerun the ancient. If it's running, I, I'm actually a shock. I'm really annoyed about it. Like, <laughs> the whole, point, You're the whole point was that they advertised it as like it's one time event. And I'm sorry, but we all agreed that the reason it was so long was because it was one time they wanted everyone to get there. So why the frig did I spend two hours killing these fuckers if it was like multiple <laughs> events? Well, yeah. now we know. Get on your <laughs> alt. And sit next to the area where the where the final showdown is, and just wait for everybody else to ring it around for you. <laughs> oh man, I hope no one's listening, but you know I'm gonna be on my alts, and I'm gonna camp that chest. Yeah, just, just move, Dante bring said. all of your bring all of your alts in there, and log out with each one of them, and then log in with one right as it's ending, and then log in with another one while the chest is still there. 
<laughs> right. You see me. You see me tomorrow. Matt Visual got banned because <laughs> he was retarded. <laughs> he got six legendary precursors somehow. <laughs> and Arena Net said no. That's wrong. <laughs> oh man. All right, guys. I think that about wraps it up. Uh, so I am going to stop by uh, start by thanking you guys for coming on. Very, very awesome to have you guys here. It was like a YouTuber party, essentially. And uh, that was that was a fantastic time. I'd like to remind everybody that next week, we're going to be doing a Necromancer show. Kai's very excited about that. So we're going to be talking all about Ooh, the Necromancer. The Are you a Necromancer? Oh, yeah, I'm many things. Oh. <laughs> I'm a, I have an 80 Necro, that's I really like, 80 Guardian, and an 80 Warrior. All right, we might have to get you back on for Necros next week. But I know <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to need one more Necro to bring on the show. So if you are interested, feedback at talesoftyria.com is how you can get a hold of us. Tell me that you're interested. We'll do some, some little interviews. We'll get everybody. Uh, we'll try and find the person that best represents the Necromancer as he exists in the wild of Tyr <laughs> that sentence got away from me there a but less of necro <laughs> the, the most the most necrotic of the viewers <laughs> the listeners will bring on the show so feedback at tales of let me know you're interested we'll try and find a time to talk to each other it'll be a good time so definitely do that if you have any other questions comments if you have suggestions for what we should talk about on the future of the show topics questions etc feedback at tales of i do read all of them except not the ones in the past week because i was busy but i'm gonna get to those soon so if i haven't got back to you i'm sorry about that also quick shout out for the people that are looking for guilds gzg guild gaza there's some info in the show notes for you they're on aradon terrace check them out they're looking to do world versus world very soon but they also do, do a bunch of dungeon runs good time legacy of raiders the eu server desolation focuses on world versus world and is looking for new players so check those out all the info is in the show notes which is on tales of and you can find it also in the details if you're watching this on youtube <clears throat> Okay, I think I got through everything in the time that it takes for this main theme to wrap up. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, Dantane on YouTube, Kai Dream on YouTube, and Matt Visual on YouTube, and as always, Bridger at Sound Strategy Network. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have a good one. Bye. All right. I'm in shock that it's The ancient Kalkra event. Alright, there we go. Dante, I have a problem. You need a new avatar. We need to put you in a trash can with a little green head. <laughs> 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 but you bring up some good points, man. I'm not I'm just I'm just I'm just making a joke. That was a good show. Oh, it's good. I like it. It's good to have some different opinions. No, absolutely. That's my like... that, that, that I'm not I'm not criticizing you. It's good to have multiple Different, and yeah. especially since we all kind of share your you know bitterness so to about some degree cynical and vega <laughs> right. being the voice of reason exactly <laughs> he's taking freelancers sort of bitter like ah this is terrible <laughs> <laughs> but from a pve player's perspective i feel go. monster says like, monster in the chat says yeah. we need more dante uh, what yeah monster in the chat says we need more dante frill says need more dante more dante <laughs> well, if you want more Dante, I have a YouTube channel, so, you know, there you go. it's <laughs> on the internet. It's this little thing called the internet. It's the inter It's the second biggest website in the whole planet. <laughs> Trust me on this. <laughs> or at least I still think it is. Maybe it's the... says we need more Matt. He also has a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Elementalist did get Where nerfed. can I watch more Matt visual videos? Oh, right. Oh. On his channel. <laughs> Shin Maruku says, is it true Elementalist got nerfed even more? They, they did nerf the Elementalist a considerable bit by, by damaging our Evasive Arcana, which is the trait that they get at the end of the Arcana tree, which basically means whenever they dodge, they would perform a spell based on their attunement. And in the past, those were all uh, Blast Finishers, which allow you to, to stack Might or Regeneration or what have you. It was really nice. And there was apparently a bug, which I was not aware of, which was that whenever you did a dodge, it would always have a blast finisher, even though the effect, the actual spell, like the flame blast or the eruption or whatever, those things would only trigger every nine seconds. 
Like, there was a cooldown on him. If you dodged twice in a row, you wouldn't get the spell, but you would still get the blast finisher instead. So, that was a problem. But now they got rid of blast finishers completely, so none of those spells are blast finishers anymore, which I was very disappointed by. Because I like yeah. those. Poor, poor Elementalist, man. I, I've been scared <laughs> to even level one up. I was like... No, yeah, like... I was like, so people say, <laughs> it's like so much work to play an elementalist. If you're not getting the reward for the skill that the skilled player that you are, then you're gonna feel like it's not worth it. So yeah, I mean, just play with staff. <laughs> the daggers, Necro, daggers feel fun. Yeah. Daggers feel really fun. They're just not as effective. It's too easy to get your ass killed. They don't. The the, the reward does not pay off. And and the the scepter dagger is also really fun. There's some awesome combinations in there that again don't pay off because you're too damn vulnerable in that whole thing. I feel like I don't know. It's 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 not easy to to try and fix that. Except maybe if you just made daggers do more damage or something. I don't know. But then PVP Next gets all screwed up. <laughs> Melee Necro and Staff Necro, it, everything is Anything just Necro, like, so, Necros are so hard PvE to pick a weapon. kings. Yeah. It's like, I don't know which weapons I want because I'm restricted to only two, and it's like, they're all so much fun, and that, that's the hardest part of it, being a Necro, is that you need to pick your favorite combination. And What do you play, Matt? I use Staff and then Scepter Dagger. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much the Scepter Dagger, and I would use the staff, like, in World v. World and stuff like that, and I play, like, a Wellomancer because yeah, I'm I just drag that. everything to me, the whole world, all or <laughs> just well, lay well, down well, whales well. and everything just, you see all the numbers kind of pop up, I'm, yeah. I'm so, it's like... Just, it's like so, okay. so the chat room is saying that the, 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 the issue with the ancient event is that certain overflows are just starting or haven't finished it. I think what's happening is after everybody, the big initial push when that ancient thing happened, everybody after that was done left the Lost Shores, right? Because there was nothing else to do. And then more people got home at like 6, 7 o'clock and logged in and joined the Lost Shores. Only many of the overflows probably disappeared right after those those series. So now they are re rebuilding those overflows. They're now re being remade and maybe the event is resetting on some of those overflows because they're uh. sort of existing for the first time again. I don't know. It seems like that's possible. But it's probably, it's very probable that that event is going to get shut down after today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would think. I would think they would have like a little patch and remove it, yeah. What do you mean, why play Elementalist when you can play a Terra Sorcerer? I tried playing a Terra Sorcerer because, but ruined by Guild Wars 2 Elementalist because as soon as I tried to cast a spell and move and I was rooted in place, I was like, fuck this. <laughs> no way. That's I can't bullshit. play any other MMO now. Like, I, I got back into WoW when Mr. Pandaria came out and I played that for a little bit, but it took a long time to get used to not being able to move. I just feel like. You just should be able to move. It should just be the rules from now on in MMOs. <laughs> you have to be able to move and dodge and swap your weapons. Yes. Otherwise, I'm not interested. I try to dodge was everywhere I, I am. I tried playing Skyrim, and I was like, why won't I dodge? <laughs> Please, double on? tap, double tap, can't dodge. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. And it, also now, like, your character screen has to be on H, and bags have to be on inventory, not on B. Like, I have to rebind everything to Guild Wars 2 bindings because I'm so like, God, this is weird. <laughs> Kai, my friend. <laughs> I remember listening. This is just a weird story that popped in my head. My friend was uh, was listening to the show, and, uh, and, and I think you said something along the lines of HD. And he's like, oh, HD. I love British people. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Like, did you say HD? Yeah, we H say HD, and you said HD, and oh, I've heard other I people say that as well. Like H, like I, my, well, it's like it is a British thing, I guess, but it's kind of also referred to as like British slang. Like my mum and my grandparents would be like, it's not H, it's H, but it, <laughs> it's like a, it's like a lazy. I don't know. Everyone I know says H, but it, it is like frowned upon even in England. So. <laughs> So it's like ain't over here. Yeah, it's like ain't. It's actually ain't. <laughs> we ain't Let's heard some... that. <laughs> well, let's get some chicken. <laughs> <laughs> we need to do that. We need to do swap accent day. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Matt, please just say hell no. Just for me once. Whoa, whoa, that was a segue there. <laughs> I, I just, it just makes me happy inside. Wait. What do you mean, okay. like the black way? Like, oh hell no! Like, 
Sorry, Ben. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We, when we first became friends, and it was like me, Matt Visual, Tubelephant, Kabooby, Philectic, and Psycho Power Ranger all on Skype. We used to do our uh, like our let's talks, right? And it literally would be like us just ranting and rambling and scheming and wondering what was going on in Guild Wars 2 before it came out. And it just used to be, we would say something, and Matt would be like, oh, hell no! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. I have to say, my favorite British voice, and I don't know if there's if it's a dialect or it's just him, has got to be Michael Caine. Right? Really? Michael Caine, he's awesome. He's quintessential. He's like... Who's he from? Michael Caine. He helps Bruce Wayne in Batman. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was a really good impression. The, that was good. The key, the key to doing a Michael Caine impression is you have to say the words, my cocaine... And if you say that, all of just one whole thing, you're saying yeah. Michael Caine's name in his own accent. That's <laughs> Michael Caine. Stay away from Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. That is good. We should have impression lessons with Bridger. Ruby <laughs> Roo. <laughs> oh, Scooby Doo. Brings back memories. <laughs> Everybody says. <laughs> Uh, that I do a very good Bane impression as well. Uh, <laughs> do it. Okay. <clears throat> <coughs> you think the dark is your ally. You merely adapted to it. I was born here. <laughs> that is good. That is I good. love Bane. You can make all kinds of... We always... <laughs> you think the blank is your ally is one of our favorite memes <laughs> in our yeah. circle of friends. <laughs> They're like, we're playing Mario. You think the mushroom is your ally. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get the poison mushroom. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Everyone's saying, why isn't Bridger a voice actor? I always assumed you were a voice actor. Ah, jeez, I wish. I don't know. That seems like a hard industry to get into. <clears throat> Have you done it, like voice acting for anything? Because I, in my head, I always assumed that you had done no. some voice acting stuff. I should. Right. Donald Duck. I've been, I've been wanting to learn how to... No, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes crazy. Yeah, he changes his voice a lot. You can't oh, be a voice but... actor unless you could do Morgan Freeman. Ever since I was a little boy, people have enjoyed the sound of my voice. <laughs> That's, That's I, good. I, it's, not, it's not great, but I just, I'm actually doing the impression of Morgan Freeman that was on Family Guy. <laughs> I'm doing an impression of an impression. But um, the other one that I like is... <clears throat> Uh, Kermit the Frog here with ABC News, telling you about all the important oh, wow. things in Guild Wars 2. Uh, that is yeah, good! That's, that's good. the best one! That was good! Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? That's a, that's a thing I remember that episode. That oh is so good! I watched too much Sesame Street. There Everyone's saying, holy hell. <laughs> Rainbow Connection HD. <clears throat> Let's see. That's the Rainbow Connection song that you were singing. Yeah, but I... S that's playing over it by accent. There we go. About rainbows and what's on the other side. Okay, that's, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I um, <clears throat> I'm not gonna do it, but um, I ta I tooled around with the idea of uh, doing an FPS Russia impression, with, <laughs> and then I thought I'm gonna get sued, because <laughs> <laughs> like you can you know you can do voices of cartoons or whatever, but I was like you know I'm sure one day this would get back to him somehow, <laughs> and, <laughs> and they'd be like look you, because it's it he doesn't really sound. Yeah, no, he's not really Russian. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> his name, his I real name is Eric. <laughs> but he's just like, it's me. Oh, God, I can't do it. I'd have to watch. Uh, hey, everyone, videos. it's me. Yeah, you're right. I can't do it either. I can't yeah, do it on Skype. What, he, do what does he do for his entry? He's like, hello, my friends. This is APS Russia. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. Guild Wars 2. And then, you know, I just assumed that he'd be like, this guy says that hey, Guild Wars 2 is amazing. I'm like, I don't fucking like Guild Wars 2. <laughs> Who is he? He's like this guy. Like, oh, I'm gonna fucking sue him then. 
Well, I, I've seen a lot of people like I, I was just watching a video. I don't know why I was watching WoW, but Brain Deadly was doing some FPS Russia WoW thing as well. <laughs> and he like acted the voice and stuff like that. A lot of Brain people like, try to, try oh, to get of, famous off of other people. He's kind of a cuckoo nut, Ed. Somebody <laughs> said do Australian. Crocky, now what we got here is a brilliant Carker. Now, Carker in their natural environment are really angry at the humans. That's why they invaded Lion's Arch. Now, what we're gonna do is poke him with a stick until he gets mad and tries to make babies at us. <laughs> Steve Irwin was awesome, man. I love Steve. Why do you have to go and poke die? That? Why do you have to go and die? <laughs> oh, man. Damn you and death. I sometimes do that for fun, though. When I'm bored at work, if, you don't uh, die? if no, I don't die. I sometimes will answer the phone when I see it's from an extension in the hotel of like somebody I know. Like if it's one of the salespeople upstairs, I'll just answer the phone in a random accent. Like one time I'll do, "Yo, dude, what's up?" And then next time it'd be like, "Uh, you know, uh, and hello, then how are you? Welcome <laughs> to the business <laughs> center." <laughs> Just random thing. Oh, I'm sorry, boss. That was just me messing around. <laughs> no, my around. boss doesn't. <laughs> he don't care. <laughs> oh, man. It gets... For real talk, though, this whole time, I've been trying to karma farm. And I, I heard it. Gotten... I heard you going... I can hear click, click. I, I've been <laughs> muting. I was muting myself when I realized that I'm like... The, I'm, I'm like, the conversation will go on autopilot from here, and I just... I'll mute my mic so you don't hear my key. My, my mouth. farming where? They... Uh, exactly. <laughs> I've been bouncing around everywhere. I've just I have waypointed like twenty five times. Like you find it's not that there aren't places to to farm because there are. It's just no one's here because uh, yeah, you nobody can't farm alone. Yeah. Nobody wants to do this. Like I'm in Malcor's Leap running around. I'm like, there's plenty of events, plenty of great events, which just like kill these catapults, do this, this, and this. But like nobody's here. People just sit. In Cursed Shore all day, and because yeah. uh, that's what we were used to, and, and you can't. And I mean, I guess this, it, it, they were to come out and be like, the solution was so that you did events everywhere. It's like, yeah, but what so if I only have like an hour to play? I don't want to jump around all of Tyria looking for crap to do. It would have been nice if, in addition, you notice in the patch notes they said now you can go down to level 55 plus zones and you can get you know level 80 gear dropping there. It would be great if those zones had their karma scaled up for you if you were level 80 as well so that you could feel like oh i don't have to go to or i can go to mount maelstrom i could go to to up to the frost frost gorge whatever that's called well, um, that would yeah. make sense that, that would, would nice. make a, frost gorge sound having something sense. to do would make a lot of sense yeah other than Zormag, <laughs> yeah. we've already who we already know is he has never given me anything good ever i've mm -hmm. only ever gotten blues and greens out of that guy i don't think he likes me I've yellows. got a funny tweet to read. I think it's funny. Anyway, long after Kai said, my only complaint about the Lost Shores is that the ancient Karka boss was super crabby, and I think he was well sheltered growing up. <laughs> oh! They're Boo. coming out, guys. They don't... Shh. Elizabeth says his, trend, his friends tried to improve his social life, but they just couldn't get him out of the shell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love man. shit jokes. <laughs> I... Damn, I gotta, I gotta play Skyrim again. I, I actually should do that. I know there's, there's mods that look for voice actors in Skyrim. That would be fun. Yeah. Do it. That would be fun. Yeah, All right. Be... So go. the other, <laughs> uh, I guess that's about it here. Mm -hmm. That was a fun show, though. That was, I mean, it's been a good weekend. I haven't played this much Guild Wars two in a while. Yeah. To be so fair. we were talking about it, weren't we? That you know, we wanted to come back and. It seems like everyone took a break, right? Yeah. Because I know, yeah. I know, I did. After the Halloween, I was like, ah, eh, I'm gonna go do something mm. else for a while. Well, I yeah. felt like I wasn't doing anything because Matt, I kept seeing. That. I was like, Jesus, am I the only one who like just can't find <laughs> anything to do? As I was speaking to people, it was kind of like, no, I'm not actually playing that much. And yeah, I, that, like, when I started that guy, that's when I actually came back and started playing like for real. Because after the release, I was like, hmm. I don't want to do dungeons. Yeah. Like, oh, you can do dungeons. I don't want to do it. I, I actually do. I want to do all the dungeons at least once. I haven't done them all once yet. Right. No, and it seems, like, it seems like I should. 
Uh, I was, I mean, we had a good time. I finally beat the third uh, version, the third uh, explorer mode in Asclonian Catacombs. Um, we finally figured that fucker out. Holy crap, that took a while. Um, <laughs> it was like, oh, oh, you have to kill. It was, our problem was you have the, the stupid burrows spawning one after another, right? And we, we got those down. We knew exactly where we needed to go. We killed them as fast as they got, came. But when burrow number four comes up, a breeder spawns before you can even start hitting it. So you can't stop that breeder from spawning. We would focus down the burrow and move on, and the breeder would just sit there breeding, breeding over and over again. We figured if you stop and wait for the extra 10 seconds and finish off the breeder and then go and hit the burrows, it's way easier. Uh, at least that's that's how we suddenly just beat it way easy after we stopped to do that. Just a hot tip for anybody that wants to try and beat that part. I'm told the other two sections of Asclonian Catacombs are pretty easy. Yeah. I just I just don't think they're worth my time. I need to get, get exotic. I don't even have a set of exotic yet because I wanted a specific <laughs> set and it's hard you to play get. this game, Bridger? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can I can craft my own. I exotic everything. You don't like even go here, here Bridger. <laughs> <laughs> my, I was fully exotic like a week after I hit eighty. Now well, I could have been, but I didn't want any of the stats on the easy stuff. Like I could I I could I I'm a tailor. I'm level four hundred tailoring. I could build myself a level four hundred exotic a set of tailor, but I don't want any of those. What I wanted is the power primary and then vitality toughness which you can toughness. get by running ask on yes. catacombs and by running shit tons of world versus world and i haven't got but, done enough of those things to to sort of grind that out and you can't buy that off the auction house but not really nope. the world versus world part like you say that thinking you can but not really yeah because it takes, you can't you can't get that many because one piece badges. of gear is like 325 badges which is absurd just absurd yeah like, i've got like that, 150 that's now that's one of those things that with they're like hey cool event hey let's get more people to come in and play like okay yeah really great carcas are a very interesting sort of monster to kill and whatever but like come on let's address like some of the things that people hate like the fact that badges of honor don't drop off people yeah that seems like you only ever like, every third person seem to get they should be badge called of badges honor. of jumping because that's the only way you can get them <laughs> very true. i'm serious i will petition them to change it and then a gift of battle can be changed to gift of jumping. Because I don't get <laughs> any. It's the only way to get. I don't cars. get any off of people. Like, everybody tells me, like, well, you just get on an air cart and you can mow down people. If you get on a ballista, you'll get, like, 20. I'm like, yeah, but, like, if you have a not only can you not into your do ballista. that by yourself. Like, if you were to even try to make a ballista, because you can't. You need, like, friends to help you or whatever. But even if you do, it's all random. Like, if you're going to get a bunch of badges, it's all random. Like, I run the EB jump puzzle... I try every day. And like every other day, I get poop uh, on my main character. Like I'll get like six badges. That's the Eternal Battlegrounds one where you're supposed to be rewarded like a lot of badges. Yeah. Today I got 15, but you know, I mean, it's all random. And that kind of stuff I don't like about this game. I have a video I'm making or I'm slowly working on because I don't want to. I do have a nice Guild Wars audience and they're really cool people who are very understanding when I have something to say about the game that I don't like. They don't just go, oh my god, unsubscribe, you know? So I try not to sit there and, like, say, yeah, well, this game sucks because of this. But this game, it sucks in some ways because, like, the, it's, you 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 have all this, I don't, again, I don't refer to it as hype, but you have all this, like, planning, you know? You have this, like, five or four years of developing the game and all this, and their d dynamic events are brilliant and all this crap. It's a really great, beautiful game. Problem is... You don't listen to your damn uh, player base when they say, hey, this is stupid. Fix this. You want to put in vagina crab monsters and make <laughs> yeah. us all lag out. It's like, could you make <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say vagina. <laughs> I, want, I didn't want to be the one to say it. Yeah, I, I was you. waiting for it to happen. I'm like, because when you first saw it, when you saw it in the trailer, it jumps out the vagina. water and goes, yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh, oh. No. For those Holy of you vagina. age limit, <laughs> for those of you wondering, Martin Kirstein says we have a team looking into the disconnection problems that prevented some people from receiving their event rewards. We will implement a solution so that people who participated will get their rewards. But this takes work on our end. Keep an eye on the forums and social media channels. Blah blah blah. So it okay, looks like okay. some people had some problems. We're like, yes, the ancient cark is going down, and then they get disconnected, <laughs> and it's like I got a legendary precursor. Like no, no, I didn't get in. I got disconnected. Oh crap.
all that means is that if you um, want free loot, put a ticket in. <laughs> because we know arena that doesn't have a way to like sort of track that like fact check players yeah oh yeah and i'm still waiting for a reply on my badges of honor from completing the all the all the world versus world maps by the way arena net i'd like You're my supposed 50. to get them and they didn't give it to you i did i did world versus world maps uh the first month of the game and at the time um the rewards were a big old pile of shit and another pile ah, of poop. And, and then we were like, what is it? Because it was, it was really weird. It was like level 20 greens. You're like, what? And then they changed <laughs> it. They changed it to 10 badges of honor per map. And I'm just like, hmm, it'd be nice to have those. But, you know, <laughs> whatever. It, he, he, he's wanting because he needs his gift of battle. Yeah. That's all, that's I all need. he needs. Oh, really? I, I'm like, I'm like, and that's the first thing I got. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I want World vs. World to be better, man. We talk about that almost every week, the freelancers on, but I think they really do need to do something. The orb change was really good. Taking yes, orbs. they need to break up the Zerg, though. There needs to be a reason to break the Zergs up. Yeah. Well, they, the smart servers, big servers that participate in PvP, they break up their Zergs. They just have bigger Zergs than you, so. <laughs> straight by that. It's and, true. You know, like, I don't know. I, mean, I I like world versus world. I, I think too. That, I, I think it's a good it. idea. It's just the uh, player calling is a mechanic that's in. It, it's like yeah. in the server software, and you can't change it. That's their that's their solution to people losing frames and stuff. But it's also pain when there's like a hundred people in front of you and you don't see them until like yeah. they that's, destroy that's you. That's certainly you the biggest problem. They've said that there was bombers and stuff. They've said that there was a solution in place so that you at least be able to see nameplates at a reasonable distance, so you'd be able to know where to AOE and you'd still be able to target <laughs> things. <laughs> Whoever said that doesn't play this game because they don't have that. To, no, no, like, no, it's not in. It's not in. The, the, oh, somebody, okay. somebody in so, the, one of the actual developers said they've got they've got a work they've got that fix currently in testing. Essentially, that's a mm. temporary workaround which may wind up being a permanent workaround to the culling issue. So mm. we'll see. Uh, that that certainly would help a lot to improve the. Uh, the enjoyment that I have in World yeah. vs. World. It's just so frustrating because I have a lot of fun when I'm in a group of about 30 to 40 people and we're fighting another group of about 30 to 40 people. It feels like you can do a lot to actually affect the outcome of the battle. You can try to coordinate in the right way. You know, okay, I need we need guardian bubbles up over here, what have you. But as soon as you get to 100 people, even if you could see those 100 people, all tactics get thrown out the window and everybody just mass AOEs. It doesn't feel like you can affect anything anymore. Yeah. That's why I wanted the Zerg broken up more than anything else, is because the smaller battles are more rewarding and satisfying because it feels like you have actually done something useful besides just mash your one key. Mm. Which in my case is an explosive, which does up to the AoE. <laughs> well, and then, uh, it's, it's like, I've, like I've had ta conversations with Matt and other people about just, it's all about whether or not they learn from what they're doing. If they do this closed-minded bubble crap where they're like, no, we're arena that we, this is our game, we know what we're doing, and then they just don't put in things, uh, suggestions. Somebody had said, Kai said something, and it was like, this is from, it, it's one of those things where like, that's from World of Warcraft. And yeah. the, the typical response you, you get from <coughs> ArenaNet is, well, if it's in WoW, we don't want to do it. We'll do yeah. something else. And it ends up being an arbitrary workaround just to be different. It's like, I get it, you're trying to be different, but come on, some normalcy is really a good idea. So how about you Something stop? Something work well in WoW that, that could be good in Guild Wars 2, so it's like, you know, stop being stubborn in the internet, just let's have fun. It, I mean, people people will copy Guild Wars 2 from then on. This is the Well, have you looked at Elder Scrolls Online? Yeah. When I started reading Elder Scrolls Online, I'm like, that's in Guild Wars 2, and that's, oh, that's in Guild really Wars great. 2, and that's, that's in what Guild you Wars do. 2. What World of Warcraft does it all the time. They copy games all the yeah. all the time. So it doesn't. I mean, come on. If it makes your game better, do it. That's it. Something that makes sense in to the Guild Wars it. world, like Fractals of the Mist, is a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing, I mean, I was I was talking with uh, some of the TL guys about Elder Scrolls Online, and from what they were telling me, it sounds like they have put a lot more emphasis on their world versus world. 
uh, example. I mean, it sounds like they did the similar thing to copying DAOC, the three factions, etc. Uh, you know, concept that DOC, you know, uh, did a long time ago. But they also have a much, much, much bigger map. My understanding is if you take Eternal Battlegrounds and replicate it eight times, then you've got the size of the Cyrodiil zone in Elder Scrolls Online in terms wow. of, you know, how long it takes to run across the thing. And that's the world versus world zone. And that's also the best PvE zone. They're trying to do one of those double time things. It sounds like it's going to be a combination of, like, DAOC, realm versus realm, world versus world, as sounds well like, uh... as um, the, what is it, the, like, the, the, the system with a lot of PvP and... Um, uh, Legacy Legions, what the hell's that thing? League of Legends. No, in in <laughs> Korea, the big MMO it starts with an L. Terra. Uh, no. Oh, the the L? Lineage. Some lineage. Other... Something like lineage, where you yeah, can have lineage. an emperor and guilds can own specific sets of the territory, and there's an economy built into it. Like if you own a bunch of logging camps, your guild has the, like the monopoly on logs or something, which are not like items that players will use for crafting but will be used in the war effort and you know you have stock and you can do weird stuff with the economy it sounds like they're trying to throw eve in there i don't know it's very it sounds like very ambitious in the same way it that good. in the same way that other things are ambitious i'm i've not looked worried into any of skeptical. elder scrolls online and everyone keeps telling me please guy you make news videos about elder scrolls online it's like oh, I don't it's know, a year I'm not away but yeah it's, it's like it's, they say 2013 I right. am worried that it's not even going to be out until the <laughs> end of 2013, if not 2014. That's how the, that's how these usually go. It's not pushed back at least once. It's not an MMO. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Guild Wars 2 is meant to be released. It should have like been pushed back once. It should have been pushed back one more time. Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. All of that stuff you were describing up until you started, you know, like, like a bit of even there, all of that really sounded a lot like World of Warcraft on a PvP server. Like, mm. it's a giant map with PvP and dungeons. I'm like, that's World of Warcraft. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but, you know, everywhere. with dynamic events, like, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> as long as it's done right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I, yeah, I, when January I'm, I'm, comes rolling around, if we get some event and it's like, hey, this is going to be super fun, and it's not, I'm just going to be like, forget it. I'll just yeah. see you later. Call me when something... Because I pay attention, and I don't do, like, new stuff. I try not to, like, make videos about patch notes unless it's something that I'm like, oh, really my God, this to. is really great, you know. Uh, but they haven't done anything yet. Yeah, because most of the time you can just read the patch notes yourself unless there needs to be well, some special but commentary to be honest there's there's a big group of people of who people. don't want to read them on blogs yeah, they, don't wanna, they don't they're it's not it's that they're big. lazy they just prefer to have somebody that they like tell them stuff like with news and whatever and that's yeah. why you and like yeah. things that recycle the news and it's just i i can't be creative <laughs> enough to <laughs> sit there and be like oh yeah i'm gonna read what's on massively.com because that's that's what my videos would look like It'd be, it would look like i'm reading what's off of a website and i yeah. don't that's why i don't do it but you know if they changed warriors or something then great but they didn't do shit to warriors in this patch they just made like a bunch of things that we had that were not using combo finishers uh use combo finishers which is kind of shocking but you know we have a lot of weapons so i guess they might have fucked up we yeah. still no karma events popping up, by the way. We've done, like, five in, like, the last hour and a half. <laughs> oh, wow. Awesome. Good luck. Man, I, I've just started like... with my legendary, too. But, you know, <laughs> Jugs of Karma! <laughs> I don't fucking no. know. No. Jugs of Karma are really cool, and every day it's something to go for, but... No, that is not, it, it's going to take you forever. Take you, like... Ever. I sh I've spent three million karma in this game already. That's 100k yeah, a month too. is just Jugs of Karma. It's I like probably good. only earn about 500k in total. Uh, All right. Well, that's scary. actually pretty good. It's scary. I wish I even had that. I, I, I played a lot in the beginning, too. I, I totally noobed it out. I went down to the temples in Ore because some of them sell the gear that I want, the, the you know, power, vitality, tough. Match it. So, is there any temple that's open? And somebody said, Yeah, Melandru, you know, you can go there. So, I went there and I saw a chess piece. I was like, There, that's exactly what I want. It's got these things. So, I double clicked on it an instant before I realized it was heavy armor. Oh, oh yeah. 
no. There goes 42,000 karma. I can't get Ouch. back. Oh, man. Oh, so no, wow. I'm kicking myself. That's one of and those things can't... that you would think that they ha they would have in an MMO. Like, oops, did you buy the wrong thing of karma? And they are like 42,000, so maybe. You shouldn't have even, a fail safe. You shouldn't be able to buy something that soul binds instantly is the wrong, you know, armor for you and can't be salvaged. Like that item has literally zero value to me. It can sit in my bank or I can destroy it. I can literally not sell it to a vendor. I cannot salvage it and I cannot wear it. And I cannot give it to an alt. So I it don't... literally should not be buyable by me. Looks like you need to re-roll the warrior. <laughs> well, no, it, that, that doesn't so. help. I can't give it to my warrior. It's soul bound. It's not account bound. That's the Oh, problem. it's not even account bound? It's not account bound. It says soul bound. It was a Ouch. lot worse. It, everything used to be soul bound before until they like patched a lot of it. Yeah. I don't even think there's a um a dialogue that pops up and says like no. are you sure you want to buy this? There was nothing. Like there is one on salvaging, which is fucking annoying because yes, it's a green. I don't want it. Just let me salvage it. <laughs> I shouldn't exactly. there should be that's like stuff like that. And I don't expect them to like read my mind. I expect them to take feedback. And to ignore the people who are like, This game sucks now because of ascended armor. Like ignore those people. Yeah. But like if because I, I plan on making a couple of videos like, shit I think should change, blah, blah, blah. And if they look at that and go, well, no, we don't want to do that, then, well, then fuck you. I play your game, you don't. Uh, <laughs> player suggestions are always the best. That's why mods and WoW was, was, a, was a really good idea. Because they took those, they took mods and put them in the game. So player suggestion and player feedback. And please learn yeah, from these um, events. I just think the strongest part of Guild Wars 2, the thing that got, I know, like, Dante, unfortunately, I didn't know you, like, before release or anything like that, but I know, like, me and Matt, for example, we were so, like, you couldn't have had two people more fanboyish over this game, like, come on, like, we were so excited, everything about it, I was like, the events, oh my god, and now it's kind of like, the events are nothing now, like, if I'm not grinding for a legendary, then I'm not doing any events, like, there's no point. I'm not doing any dungeons because I don't need the gear. World v. Worlds are right, but then the whole, like, I can't see people thing, it's just kind of like every little part of the game has this issue that is kind of making it not fun. And it, I don't know, it's just kind of... The, I'm finally glad the fractals are here because, you know, I want to play those loads, but apart from that, there's nothing I want to do because... I, we're all sitting here stopping. like... Damn it, I've only played 200 hours of this $60 game. This is terrible. <laughs> I keep getting new stuff, but I'm done with it already. Fur! <laughs> Get off my lawn! <laughs> I mean, we have to put it in perspective every once in a while. I look at my yeah, age yeah. and I'm like, I've gotten so much money, uh, you know, such much value for my money. It, you know, of course, and I wrote that huge article about how you can't have a, uh, a, a MMO experience that is endless. There's literally no way to do it. It takes too long to make the content and it's too fast to actually go through it. And people still are like, I want endless content. Like, okay, then you're asking for them to force you <laughs> to play the same thing over and over again, if that's what you're... I honestly don't mind playing Guild Wars 2 for like a week and a half during these event situations and yeah. then taking a week or two yeah. off playing League of Legends, playing Skyrim, playing Planet Side 2, and then when Winter's Day comes, I'll jump back in and play for a week before the actual okay. event again, and I get oh, progress on my, <clears throat> on, on getting my new alt or my new characters or what have you. Unfortunately, I have to play all the time because I host a podcast. <laughs> but, <laughs> on the other hand... <laughs> you know. I agree, like... I, I yeah, I totally hate playing that, Guild Wars but... 2 and making videos about it, and, and <laughs> this sucks so bad. <laughs> Ridger, play the game. <laughs> 200 hours, I almost chuckled. <laughs> how much are you at? What's I'm your age? I'm going to check out what I'm at. I don't even know. I'm, at, I'm just going to do it right now. It's like 500 and something. Damn. 532. But I... But, and I don't, I don't say this like, oh, I was in the beta, but I've been playing this game since last year, so I have like right. thousands of hours put in. But I, 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 still. Yeah. I, see, I'm allergic to anything that looks like a grind. I have an allergy that, that comes to me whenever I enter anything that's like a Skinner box. I have to go, I don't want you to force this pacing on me. So. Well, and I think argument versus not grind argument is a lot of people think that it is forced and it's not especially in guild wars it is not oh no like it's if you're playing not. wow you're like yeah you're forced you better get an lfr get your item level up 
No, no, no. I'm not complaining is, so. about it. I agree with you 100%. The reason that I'm playing Guild Wars 2 is because pretty much every ever MMO that I've ever played, I quit after not even making max level. I never... I played... I, I started World of Warcraft when it came out, and then I came back to it for the ex, the first expansion, um, the, the Blood something Curse... What the hell was that? The Burning Crusade. Burning Crusade. Sorry. That's how long it's been. The Blood Tide Coast was not... <laughs> <laughs> no, I came back for the Burning Crusade, and then I came back for Cataclysm. I skipped the, the, the North thing because that seems stupid, but I never made it to max level. I never, ever made it to max level. When I came back for Burning Crusade, I made it to what was previously the max level before I burnt out. And then when I came back for Cataclysm, I made it to what was previously the max level when it was in Northrend, but, uh, but never actually made it to what was max level at the time. I always just was like... The pacing on this is so bad. Half-Life and Valve have shown you what pacing is. Pacing is when you master a particular mechanic or a particular uh, weapon or what have you, and you feel you're ready, bam! They're there with a new thing for you to learn because most of the enjoyment I get from games is the learning aspect, the mastery aspect. If I feel I already understand something, I don't want to do it anymore. That's my problem. Mini bridge rant at the end. <laughs> I don't mind grinding as long as it's worthwhile. Like I didn't feel like it was a grinding wow when I was raiding, then a new tier would come out and I was raiding and a new tier would come out because I felt like I was in a really good guild, so we were getting progress. I felt like I could like link my achievements and you know if I if I feel like I'm better than anyone else, then I, I that, I'm happy with that. But in Guild Wars 2, it's like everyone is the same. So it's like there's nothing for me to be proud of. And yeah, I'm a little bit elitist and and I just I like to feel better than other people. I, I like my effort to make me feel like I've achieved something more. That's why I play Elmer. It's because my real life sucks. So I want to feel all powerful in this game. And it's <laughs> like I just I, I don't know. I find it difficult to tackle that. But as Bridger said, like I'm kind of getting used to playing other games, which is why I've just bought Skyrim. I've never played it before, and I'm just starting to play it. And maybe that will have like, to get all the mods. I've downloaded like. 15, but I'm one of those people like I don't want any mods that change the game. I don't want any extra crafting things I don't want any extra weapons or gear. I just want stuff that makes it look prettier So I've got a load of like did you try the step project? What's that the step project is specifically Basically, it's it's a bunch of people that said let's make Skyrim look the best ever okay. And if you type in step project and, and do I'm gonna look Wow, I gotta try that out there. You guys never heard of that? That's a, that's a very no. big stepproject.net, but that's not the... No, that's not it. <laughs> Step Project Skyrim. Let's do that. Is it on Nexus? It's the, yes, the Nexus. What it is, is it's a PDF with basically a curated list of mods that you can go through and install, and it, t and it gives you, okay, this is, the, this is the version you want, and this is the thing you want. They basically have take all the graphics mods, and they've created a thing called the... the texture pack combiner so they take you know skyrim hd skyrim visual overhaul and all these other ones and they hand pick okay this is the best you know linen texture and this is the best oh. rock texture and they put them all together in this big list now it's going to take you a while if you want to go through the whole list it also has some i and i tweaks to make the shadows look best etc etc but it's basically a one-stop shop for all intents and purposes if you just That's want great. to yeah. and and it's specifically uh, for graphical and fixes, so you know the unofficial yeah. patch and fixes to make it so that arrows are pick upable and when they're not when when in situations where they're supposed to be. Um, so it's mostly focused on graphics <clears throat> and making the game look good. And you can skip, you know, there's a whole bunch of them that are like these are optional. These are not nearly as good as the other mm -hmm. ones. So you can skip these. It's listed specific ones as core ones, and it says up front installing these might give your FPS hit by five to ten. If you install yeah. the higher quality version, of something that's a bigger hit. If you throw an ENB in there, that's another five to ten, whatever. But there's another list. There's another curated list called Gems, which is actually linked in that same. Uh, thing oh, yeah, here. I can see that. And that's the gameplay enhancement mod, so those ones actually change the gameplay rather than the graphics. But there are right. some in there that I would definitely uh, recommend, yeah, which is I, really cool. People were recommending them on my forums, like, oh, you can make dragons harder, and you can have extra things to craft. It's like, I'm playing Skyrim for Skyrim. Like, yeah, I want it to look as good as it can look. I'm, I'm actually partially against that anyway, but people are watching my Let's Play, you know, want it to look good, so I'm fine for that. But I don't want to, like, change the game. So, yeah, this list looks great. Like, thanks for showing that. Because um, I'm kind of... 
I got one that changed. I'm a massive Skyrim noob, by the way, but uh, I got one that changed like the uh, menu, so it was less kind of Xboxy and more computer. And I oh, love Sky that. Oh, Sky UI, you gotta yes, have Sky, Sky UI. UI. No That's question. So good. Like, I've recorded like three episodes without any mods, and now I've just got the mods, and I'm like, how did I do it without this? Like, the inventory without Sky UI is horrific. It like. is horrific, absolutely. <laughs> There's a couple of things that you have to have. Better sorting is a nice one because it changes. So instead of the potions being like potion of health and potion of revitalization, it just says health potion one, health potion two, health potion three. So it's very easy to see, okay, this is stronger than the other one. You have to mouse over it. What's that one? Is that Sky UI? No, oh. uh, it's the, my, Sky UI might have a version of that built in, actually. I might be wrong. What's that one called of the health potion? Uh, better sorting. It also renames better. all the soul gems, soul gem one, soul gem two, because it's like, is grand better than this other one? I don't remember. Is it full? Is it not? It kind of changes the names to make them easier. Uh, let's see. What else is in here? Immersive right, he, HUD. He, Immersive he, HUD is pretty cool. Immersive HUD basically makes the HUD disappear when you don't need it. Uh, so that the so that you can turn it back on whenever you want. It's customizable. It's pretty cool. There's one that I really like, and I'll actually throw this on the stream so you can see it. It's uh, Warbug's 3D Paper World Map, and I think this has yes, it does have a. This makes the world map look really cool. I mean, it, it's sort of one of those things where you have to decide if you like it or not mm -hmm. um, in terms of the because this is like the regular map. Uh, okay. Actually, sorry, it's in. Hang on. Where does he go to the... He shows up a couple I different maps I did download here, I a map one, but uh, I don't know. Nope, this isn't what I'm thinking of. Hang on. I clicked the wrong one, I think. I did. Let me click on this. There we go. This is Warbug's detailed world map. Oh, but it's got an ad in front of it, so hang on a second. Uh, but it, it, it makes the world map look like an actual paper map instead of like the weird top-down view of Skyrim. Oh, And okay. here's kind of what it looks like. Now, this guy has a gazillion things unlocked but it kind of and it's still kind of 3d though so it, it it basically uses the same map and it just retextures it to make it look like a sort of 3d uh, uh it's like like linen. Lord of the Rings map yeah, yeah that's awesome it's really cool looking so i definitely wanted to put this on there so that's i, I really like that yeah i might that's use in, that one. that's in the gems list um, I've got um, the. <clears throat> I currently downloaded the uh, the roads one, like the better oh, roads. Oh yeah, the and, better better qu quality world map I, with roads. Yeah. I just feel like it didn't really change much. I it was didn't just change like, too much. No. Uh, there's I a like couple one, of though. the ones that I like actually. There's oh, you know what you want to get? Uh, just if you want to do any kind of testing or just for fun, there's a mod called the alternate start live another life mod, and what this does is it changes the start of the game. So if this is for, like, if you're making a new character, you're like, okay, I played a mage before, now I want to play a fighter. Uh, instead of going through that whole stupid tutorial thing, like, I've been here, I don't need to learn how to jump, etc., you can use this mod, and it starts the game, and you're, like, in a little cell, and you just go to this thing, and you choose from a menu. You can start as a, ban a bandit in the wild, like an outlaw, and you'll actually start with a bounty on your head for one of the holds, and it's, like, four or five different places where you start with a little outlaw camp who is not hostile to you. And, and what I usually like to do if I start there is I pretend that I'm fed up with them, and I try to steal all their stuff, and if they get mad, then I kill them. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I decide I've, I've, re I've redeemed my outlaw ways and I stopped them. Now I'm going on my quest. And it, you can also start on like a ship that like you are sailing into Skyrim, but the ship uh, gets hit by a storm and you like start in a sinking ship and you have to get out of the ship and you wash up on shore next to solitude. And there's a bunch of other things, the ways that you can start. That's and awesome, it just gives yeah. a lot of uh, sort of fresh ways. But then... All you do is you have a quest that says, you've heard there's some weird dragon things around Helgen, so you should check it out. And so whenever you want to start the main quest, you just go towards this point on your map, and it will trigger the main quest, so you can get right back into the main quest. So that's that's really cool. Yeah, Definitely that is really that. cool. One see. thing, like, you must have, you sound like you played a lot of Skyrim. Like, I I've bought... started a lot of Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> I bought Skyrim and I bought Her Fire and I bought Dawnguard, but I know there's like the main quest. Like, I'm literally at Rivenwood, like the first place. Yep. Like I tried to kill a chicken and everyone's like killing me and shooting me. And <laughs> Always save before you on. try to kill something for the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm just wondering, how do I get to the vampire people? Like I want to Oh, the Dawnguard thing. Yeah. I, is, is, like a, do is I there a quest you have for it? You know, I don't even know. I don't Dawn know, guard. like, I'm just on the Somebody in chat has to help us line. out. I don't know how you start the Dawn card line. Um...
about Skyrim is there was basically three or four main story quests. You have the dragon story quest, you have the civil war story quest, and I think there was there's there's plenty of other sort of minor but also very important story quests, like the Daedric Princes are sort of together a larger chain of story quests. Um, okay. So that that was really cool. But I really liked the Civil War chain. I never finished anything, but I really liked that. Uh, oh, oh, that's the other one. Um, that's what I'm... Where, where, where is it on my head here? Uh, realism, role-playing, basic needs. Is it in here? There's one called War Zones. That's the one you need. War Zones, if your computer can handle it. Basically, War Zones, and then there's another one called Patrols. What this does is it makes you feel like Skyrim is actually having a Civil War. Because outside of the story missions you never see any fighting. But what these mods do is they'll put random encounters in various areas. So you'll just be walking along and then you'll see an army of Stormcloaks fighting an army of Imperials. And you can join in on whatever side you want and then collect from the loot. And there's another one, the patrols one, just has patrols randomly patrolling. And if they happen to run into each other while you're nearby, bam, a battle breaks out. Really cool. Uh, all right, I'll link in to here. Yeah, this website. So this is the sky, this is the gem site. That gives you the the um, the sort of game changing ones, and this is the link to the step mods. Um, and let me see, any other? Oh, realism ones. I I like the uh, the ones that uh, the basic needs mods that make you eat and drink and rest without. <laughs> but I'm kind of weird like that. Yeah, you're crazy. Like I know you, you just mentioned you're like I don't like grinding, but it's like why do you want to make yourself eat? Immersion. <laughs> Actually, I, I haven't played with that yet. I'm playing with. I, I, if I pl do play with those, I play with a very weak version of it. But I like mm -hmm. because it does add another challenge. Because it yeah. feels weird to just be walking around all the time. I don't know. That's just me. Lighting, torches, weather. At least we know what game you've been playing when you're not <laughs> yeah, playing. Yeah. But I'm not too. playing it. I've been spending the last three weeks just setting up mods. Did you know more about the mods <laughs> in the game that I beat a year ago almost than I've ever heard of? Like, I beat Skyrim. I should pro I'm should. i probably a terrible person. I should probably play Skyrim again with All more I mods. Know is that Guild Wars 2 is not Skyrim. <laughs> There you that's go. That's the best wiki. Right that... Oh, that's and not I the best wiki. Game. That's not the one I like. I like the U <laughs> USCP... What the hell? The United Elder Scrolls something wiki. That one there. Um, oh, damn it, Google, and your stupid formatting. There we go. So actually, if you look up at that wiki, you might be able to find out how the Dawn yeah. kind of thing starts. Well, I, I know that, like... I... I know it's like an expansion, but because I've never played an Elder Scrolls game and I've literally only clocked about an hour in Skyrim as of right now, it's kind of like I want to do all this stuff and everyone's like, you got to do this question and this question. And I'm just like, there's so much stuff. And There's right now, so all I'm concentrating many. is mods and stuff. You know so what I might be useful? Good. I can't remember it, but there is a there is a mod, and it might be in Gems here, that I think it might be in Time Savers or one of these other ones, that basically makes it so that unlike normally, normally if you talk to someone and they have a quest for you and you just click the dialogue tree to say oh don't tell me about that the quest will appear in your quest journal and you can right. just the, the longer you play the game the bigger this quest journal you try to you try to complete a quest and you'll wind up getting three more on the way and the quest journal just keeps filling up i don't want all these quests you can actually set up so that it gives you a pop-up like do you want to add this to your journal so you can say no no i don't want to add this to my journal i'll come back Instead. Like, I should be talking to people. Is this a tip? Yeah, I if start... you, you'll get quests by just by talking to people at the inns. At the, uh, if you talk right. to uh, I've the, been ignoring the everyone. Guys. Oh, I they'll all give you quests. Uh, but you're okay. just starting, so you'll, you'll start to, to see that. Um, especially, like, I mean, for example, there's two people arguing in Whiterun where one guy, one, the, the guy is trying to say, I must go get this sword, it was my father's, and the wife is like, you're going to bankrupt your whole family for this, blah, 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 and she storms off in a huff. If you decide to talk to him, and ask him more about what's going on, you can offer to help him and get his sword back or what have you. So then, at the bam, a quest opens up. So that's really okay. cool. Another question. How do I sell things? Because I'm a hoarder, and I watched <laughs> Felicia Day play a little bit of Skyrim, and she likes to keep all this food in her house, and like, she's got lots of barrels and stuff. And obviously, I've just started. So when I went through the first dungeon bit after you encounter the dragon, I was like, buckets, animal food, <laughs> like... Glasses, no, no, chairs, no! Food, Listen, cloth, you have everything. to, you have to and always do the heavy. division because Skyrim is actually a math teaching aid. I don't know if you guys know this, but it's actually an educational game. What
loot something, you look at how much its value is and you compare it to its weight. And if its value is not 10 times its weight, you leave it there. Right. Every single time. Okay. If, it, if it says <laughs> value 10 and weight 2, no dice. I'm not or, getting something that's 5 for 1. There's a console command that lets you carry however much you want. No, you type that's in the cheating in my No, it's not. It's not cheating because carrying a bunch of weight is a stupid idea and it's only in really <laughs> hardcore games like hardcore RPGs like Skyrim and it's being filtered out. Not that I don't like it, but I don't like that when your bag, that when your bag is full you walk really slow. Yeah, it sucks. Well, Just you can already, fucking... even with 300, even if you got no stamina at all, you can already carry more than any normal person can. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you're but not a normal the person, though. You're, you're, you're the Dragonborn, of course. I'm sorry. You should be I able to play the game. Like, I'm only suggesting it because from a Let's Play pers perspective, you yeah. don't want to be like, oh, shit, now I have to fucking drop something, and that's really yeah. entertaining. Well, actually, I I, drop cheese. I've been <laughs> thinking of making a combination Let's Play and Machinima do with, with heavy post-production editing to get rid of any boring parts. And, uh, and uh, just do a full playthrough of Skyrim with me narrating uh, over it as if I'm writing a either in a journal at the end of the day for each day or later in my life, like the exploits of, so you're reading this to learn about what happened to the Dragonborn. Well, you've come to the right place. And so every day would be one chapter in this journal, and I would do a lot of post-production to make sure that I would narrate and say, and this was the day that I met such and such, and then it shows me meeting such and such, or what have you. And I think I could do a really good job with that, but I have to get the mods right first. But that also means that I, I would like the idea of, and then, because I, I tried to, to make it here, I ran out of food, and that's an actual, you know, running out of food is a bad thing, so now I had to go hunt a deer. Like, that's a dramatic change, and it's, it's a thing that makes, that adds tension to the game, to sense. Mm. Sam asked if I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> 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 Sam, come on now. You don't watch the show very often, do you? Yes, I do have a YouTube channel. I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm just playing, Sam. Let me look it up here. Oh, it oh, oh, do I have a YouTube channel? Yeah, here you go. <laughs> ba bam, ba bam. You're watching the show that basically is the only thing I put on this YouTube channel. <laughs> Although we're having a ridiculously late post production show. I so don't like fun. how you're beating me in subscribers, but I'm still beating you in video views, so the ah, challenge nuts. is on. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how does that work? It's because of your thumbnails. That's not fair. I can't wear a low-cut shirt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just oh, kidding. Oh, I'm just oh, kidding. Oh, oh, oh man. Now, no, I'm you didn't. now I'm a misogynist. I should I should cut my losses. Somebody's talking too much truth around here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So what else is? I'm good? sorry, Kai, but asking how do I sell in a video game isn't doesn't help your your argument though. Well, she has to find. A, I mean, if you just got to the first place, you haven't found a vendor yet. If you just got to Riverwood, Wait, that's where I, the first vendor how is. Do I, how do I walk? <laughs> I'm not being funny. I've asked loads of people, how do I sell stuff? And they're like, well, you have to go to a blacksmith, and he has to want to buy the stuff you've got, and then go to a vendor, and he may, he maybe will take it off you for free. And I'm like, no, I picked all this stuff up because I want to make gold. Tell me where <laughs> I can sell it. <laughs> it's true, though. Certain vendors will only accept items that they would be interested in, but the general goods vendors will usually buy pretty much everything except weapons. So you, mm. I always go to the blacksmith, and I sell him all my weapons, and I go to the main guy, and I sell him everything else. But the okay. thing that you need to know, and this is what people should have told you about a game that's been out um, almost, well, probably, <laughs> eight, is that money gets you nothing in Skyrim. Okay. You will probably make the best gear, or you'll find it in quests. Like, there are quests that you can do where you'll get, like, the reward is, like, this crazy, like, they call them, like, legendary weapons or whatever. But, well, that's know. not true. You can get a horse with money. Yeah, but that's only and like a, a house. thousand gold pieces and as long as you don't kill your horse by walking off the edge of a cliff or something stupid <laughs> and you don't have to have takes notes. Or, or if you really want to enjoy the game and not the arbitrary like how do I sell junk just type in the console command for a bunch of money. And then just be like just cool. So I mean you gotta remember you're doing a let's play. You're not like trying to genuinely just like play the game yeah. exactly how because I don't think anybody really is gonna sit there and be like I'm gonna play Skyrim. Exactly how it's meant to be played. 
I where, think there are plenty of people that want to play like that. Make a female I just character, care. make a female character in that game, and tell me that she can't carry as much as a guy. And then you can come to you. Then you can talk about how it's genuine play and all this other crap because that's not how it works. Well, that's it's why just, there are immersion mods. Tense. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You can be immersed <laughs> if you have a game room where you have like a cave and you like to get <laughs> immersed in the game. I just don't like arbitrary things like that where it's like, wait. I'm like, yeah, this was cool in the '90s, but I don't roll dice with my friends. Uh, let's just, <laughs> let me carry stuff. Like, give me a bag space maximum. There and actually the is. There's a mod for bandoliers, and I don't know if it's on this list somewhere. But there's a, there was a popular mod on the Nexus that was like bags and bandoliers. Let me see if I can find it. And like the entire uh, the entire conversation where you're like, well, it's a, it's a teaching game. You have to like compare the weight to the thing. I was like, that doesn't help the game. I was making a joke about that. Well, I wasn't oh, being no, serious. I know you're trying to make a joke, and it was funny. It's just it's also the truth because the game is like that, and it's like okay. And I might definitely get this bag, um, infinitive bag command thing. Maybe uh, not the month. Bandolier thing, bags and pouches. If you want, if you want more space with a little bit more immersion, these are things that you can equip on your character. And I'll throw it in chat there. Bandolier bags and pouches has got a lot of endorsements on the Nexus. It basically lets you craft bags that you can then equip on your character. That gives you more space. So it's or it's a, it's sort of a compromise between the I'm just going to cheat and get everything or the I am limited by this exact system built into the game, her. <laughs> cool. Awesome. All right. I am going to shut the stream down. Thanks, everybody, for sticking around, and thanks for having a good time. Uh, yeah. It was, it was great. Everybody's like, oh, just use the Steam work, workshop. No, oh, Nexus I've heard that's bad. <laughs> Nexus is better. Mod Organizer or the Nexus Mod Manager are the two things that you need. They're very good. Mod Organizer is yeah, really good. Yeah, Nexus Mod Manager. That one's pretty good, too. I like that. All right. I'm going to cut it here. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a good one. Bye. Uh, if I can find the button.